today we are, um, today we will be dealing with the uh, workshop selection, and I think that this this is uh, one of the most important tasks that uh, Mag has been entrusted by the Secretary General. But before. Uh, uh, embarking on this path, I would like to uh, thank uh, all those who contributed uh, uh, to open consultations and MAG meeting uh, yesterday. Because yesterday we uh, also advanced um, on other issues. Uh, we had a, a very good conversation on uh, main uh, uh, sessions based on uh, conversations and, and inputs uh, secretariat will be reworking um, the draft uh, schedule and uh, uh, I hope it will be uh, circulated uh, by the end of tomorrow uh, th we do not have a rush with, with, with this uh, but just that we uh, leave uh, with a, a proposal based on our conversations and uh, also uh, uh, some modifications that uh, I had to introduce uh, simply because of uh, circumstances and the main uh, main thing that uh, will be changed in this new schedule is uh, that opening ceremony uh, and opening session uh, technically cannot be organized in the first part of the first day, in the morning of the first day, because we're risking uh, not having uh, dignitaries uh, who may want to participate in the opening uh, of, the, of the session. Likelihood that uh, high officials uh, would spend night uh, in Joao Pessoa and uh, uh, participate in the morning is uh, relatively low. But likelihood that they would fly in in the morning and uh, participate in the afternoon is much higher. So th therefore, uh, the opening ceremony and session should be organized in the afternoon. This is uh, uh, purely technical. Uh, reasons. Uh, secondly, we had also yesterday a good uh, discussion and uh, we endorsed in principle approach uh, related to intersessional activities. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, by end of MAG meeting we will have a final version that may be uh, circulated outside. I also was very pleased uh, yesterday listen uh, the reports on progress on best practice uh, work streams. This was uh, really uh, encouraging. Maybe minor, minor uh, remark from my, my side. I think it would be uh, useful uh, to align uh, the timetables of all, uh, of all work streams and to agree on the cutoff date uh, that we could uh, circulate uh, proposed texts uh, to the community prior to the meeting. There are different, different traditions, uh, if, but uh, one, if we could meet, uh, let's say, deadline of six weeks prior to the meeting as, as a circulation of information would be very good. It is, it is not requirement, it is just a best practice and this is a courtesy to participants who may need some time to review all the documentation that we're proposing uh, for IGF meeting. So uh, I would uh, simply like to encourage uh, uh, coordinators of uh, best practice uh, work streams to try to factor that in. And of course, for those who have advanced already uh, a lot in, in the work, that may be easier. For those who are just starting, that may be slightly uh, more uh, complicated. But nevertheless, please try to factor that in. Um, uh, for uh, the uh, task uh, to select workshops, we have allocated ourselves uh, nine hours. And, and I think that we should do whatever we can uh, to use those nine hours in the most rational way. Uh, starting with the punctual beginning of sessions, 
I, I noticed today that uh, we started 10 minutes uh, late, uh, and I, I think this is just a lost time. Uh, but also, we need to be uh, as flexible and um, as cooperative as, as we can. Because, of course, all of us, we have uh, certain preferences. Uh, we're coming from different uh, perspectives. Uh, but our task is to find consensus on the um, uh, workshop proposals and consensus uh, in, in, uh, in two-way consensus, whether we all of us were happy with the result or all of us were equally unhappy with the result. Uh, every, every deviation from these two options means that uh, we, we have not reached a, a reasonable outcome. If somebody is extremely unhappy, it's, it's bad. Uh, and um, therefore, let, uh, let us work collaboratively and uh, show uh, utmost flexibility uh, and listen to each other. Because uh, everybody has its own reasons to do what, what they do and, and uh, uh, propose what they propose. So coming now to the methodology, I, I hope we will not uh, spend too much time on, on, on that, but um, uh, since you asked me uh, to circulate proposal at the, at the, um, uh, during the last conference call, I did it, and uh, the, the comments that I heard were um, encouraging, uh, that uh, proposal was, um, uh, was, uh, uh, seemed to me accepted. And uh, let me re recall it, uh, that we would take automatically uh, 60 first workshop proposals that have been uh, uh, submitted and, and, and during the evaluation got the highest scores. And we have full statistics of, of those uh, uh, proposals. And then we would uh, do a selection of uh, remaining, as we agreed, 40 uh, workshop proposals uh, based on uh, highest scoring, but equally looking at a necessary uh, balance that we're uh, willing to uh, achieve in, in the program. And balance of different kind, balance of uh, uh, representation, uh, balance on uh, thematic or themes or sub-themes that, that we ourselves have identified, uh, balance of uh, proposals uh, from uh, developing and developed countries, uh, first comers and old timers and so on. Uh, again, most probably the result will not be ideal, uh, but uh, it uh, uh, it is feasible. Last, last year we reached consensus, uh, and uh, I think uh, we were uh, not blamed for uh, failing in our task. So that's my proposal, and I would like to see if there, is, uh, uh, there are any comments on, on, in that respect. And I see that uh, there is a uh, Marilyn... Uh, Virat and Michael and Avri in that order. And uh, uh, Sata. <laughs> Please, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. My name is Marilyn Cade. I, uh, good morning to all colleagues, or good afternoon, good evening, for those who are participating remotely. Uh, I want to make um, uh, two uh, comments and ask a question for clarification. Um, I first of all want to uh, thank the Secretariat for the analysis that they did, um, which helped to put into perspective the number of workshops that we uh, put forward in 2014, not the, uh, just the number received, but also the number uh, that spread across the sub-themes. We have that same information for this year that helps us to understand how many workshops were presented against the sub-themes. One comment I have is that I want to take note uh, for us to come back to in further consideration of um, 
where we may have significant duplication, even though we may have workshops which are rated very high, that I believe there's some significant duplication in some of the workshops that are in the, uh, the perhaps I'll call it the initial high category. And I just want to reserve the opportunity for the MAG to consider that since um, inclusiveness might lead us to uh, considering how we might be able to encourage um, merger of some of those. My second comment has to do with the topic of internet economy and its linkage to the main theme of sustainable development. Um, and I wanted to just call colleagues' attention to that as a, um, uh, perhaps uh, something for us to uh, consider on how we make sure, even if there's a low number of workshops that are uh, in that category, that we try to make sure in our balanced discussion that we do reflect um, the participation, um, uh, the recognition that internet economy and its linkage to sustainable development may deserve some particular focus from us. Now, my final question, actually, Chair, has to do with uh, a discussion we had yesterday, and that is possibly that if we limit the closing session to 90 minutes, we might recoup a small number of additional workshop slots. And so could I just ask clarification on that, because that might help us in terms of thinking about whether we uh, have a little more flexibility. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, those um, uh, 10 workshops uh, of the afternoon of the fourth day have been already factored in in a total number of 100. Uh, Virat, and then Michael, and then Avri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Um, I, I, are we going to discuss the criteria and the discussions on the uh, workshops just yet because it's listed after lunch. Uh, in the agenda, in the first half, it's overview of the open forum submissions, comments from the floor on the open forums, dynamic coalitions, etc. So are we changing that? Because I wanted to post some information about the analysis and some further, but I'd held it back till the lunch, uh, given the uh, starting at uh, post-lunch on the workshops. But if the chair plans to bring that up, then yeah, yes, yes, Virat. I, uh, I, I thought I yesterday men mentioned that since uh, uh, in the last conference call it was specifically requested to reverse order and to uh, do selection uh, of workshops first and then uh, discussion on open forum and way forward uh, second. So uh, I, yesterday I, I said that we would start with the workshops and we would do workshop selection today and uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, uh, we would discuss open forum uh, tomorrow in the second part of the day. Uh, for uh, what, what was uh, suggested, uh, forum uh, dynamic coalitions and interregional dialogue. That would be uh, at the end, as well as um, way forward and next steps. Okay. In which case, um, I just wanted to, I'm sorry, I can't post that thing because it was, it's under preparation, but let me just uh, make a few comments. Um, it, you've s recommended starting at uh, 61, taking the first 60, and then going 61 onwards. I just thought I'll note for the MAG um, where we are in terms of what we had set ourselves in December, because that will help us decide the focus of where the intervention should be, and also perhaps at what level we should come in, whether it's 61 or 71 or, or later. Uh, the three objectives established with the MAG in December um, with regards to the workshops were increase the number of workshops from developing countries, increase the number of workshops from first-time proposers to encourage new voices, and increase the diversity of platforms since nearly 90% tend to be panel discussions, which was not considered uh, ideal for delegate participation by a few of the MAG members. With these objectives, the process for selection and guidelines and criteria were written. MAG members had recommended several corrective actions to help achieve these three objectives. And the final document produced by Susan uh, and Fiona uh, included those suggestions. 
there was a clear preference expressed in the six translated invitations in local languages for developing country proposals, first time proposals, and an additional hurdle was set in by way of an accompanying note for family submissions. Uh, each of these has actually yielded excellent results. Uh, where the developing country workshops is concerned, in the top 60, it's up from 12% in 2014 to 37%, an increase of 200% over the last year. Um, this number actually improves to 39% if you go to the top 80 uh, in terms of calculation. Where workshops from first-time proposals are concerned in the top 60, they're up from 15% in 2014 to 38%, an increase of 150%. Uh, this number decreases very slightly if you go to the top 80. Where sub-themes are concerned, it's fairly even, but given that 65% of the workshops are in the top 60 and top 80 are from civil society, the leading theme remains internet and human rights, followed by enhancing multi-stakeholder cooperation, both in the top 60 and in the top 80. However, no theme dominates beyond 30%, which is an excellent result again. It's only where the stakeholder groups are concerned that we see a variance in favor of civil society proposals, uh, both in the top 60 and 80, vis-a-vis -vis the total proposals received. And the civil society forms, I think, about 55% of the total proposals sent in, but it's up to 68% of those who made it in the top 60 and 65%. So there is a positive variance in favor of civil society, but that's probably because of the quality of proposals that were written. Um, finally, very important on formats. Uh, there is tremendous success since panels are down to uh, 12 or 14 percent in the top 40 and 60. Roundtables are dominating now with 63 percent in the top 60 and 58 percent in the top 80. Um, my request, uh, Mr. Chairman, given this is that the merits-based evaluation process, which does have within itself corrective versions to take care of variances that various MAG members don't uh, score at the same level, actually allows us to take the results all the way up to 80 and only seek intervention in 20. It will save us time and it will yield us all the results that we had set ourselves. Higher number of developing countries, very high number of first timers, excellent distribution on sub-themes, and an excellent distribution on formats. The only thing that we are uh, still uh, concerned about uh, is the number of civil society proposals which dominates at 65. I'm not opposed to that because um, they, they, they did submit the highest number of proposals, but it is higher than the percentage. So corrective action can be taken in the remaining 20 if we start at 80, bring in non-civil society proposals, and that will bring the number of civil society proposals to 50% uh, of the total 100, and every other objective would have been met. So unless there is a real reason to intervene and change the merits-based process, we can actually save ourselves time, um, reap the rewards of the corrective process starting in December, and start with 81 rather than 61. This is my proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Birat. As, as uh, you know, I'm always very attentive and flexible in, in that. I, I would like to uh, hear a re reaction to a proposal start not at 60, but at 80. Uh, uh, we have Michael, then Avri, and then I will take a remote participant, and then we will continue with uh, uh, Sita. Please, Michael. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I would strongly oppose changing the procedure, which worked so well last year. Uh, one reason for that is that it's going to look rather arbitrary to the people who suddenly find that they are now not part of the final selection, whereas somebody, somebody at 79 will be in, somebody at 81 has a very low chance of being in because those last 20 people are in competition with a hundred good proposals further down the line. And I think that the reason we're doing the, the selection the way we are is not to achieve the statistics that Virat is talking about, is to incorporate new topics and new people 
which otherwise will be overlooked. And if we only allocate 20 spots to bring in those new topics which didn't score so high, often because they were new topics that people were not familiar with, we're going to miss the chance to bring in some very exciting new topics and new people. Uh, I, I think in the end we're not going to save any time if we do what Virat proposes. We'll just argue twice as hard, perhaps three times as hard, about those remaining 20. Uh, I also would su suggest that we, we think a little bit about the top 60. Uh, Marilyn made one point, which is that there is some duplication. Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. In some cases, we have two really strong proposals on a given topic, and they bring different looks at it. I don't think we need to spend too much time on duplication. I do think we need to consider some of the comments that were made in the evaluation process. If you do a search on the comments, you'll find that the word flash appears 108 times. And that's because many of us ranked proposals quite high, but said, there is no way this should be a 90-minute talk. This is a good, strong 30-minute talk. We definitely want to do it. So I think we need to make sure that within those 60 proposals, we don't have a number of uh, proposals where two or three or four of us all strongly suggested a shorter session. I think in particular, we should avoid giving people 90 minutes to talk about a report that they published a year ago. Uh, there's a number of those proposals this year. They're important reports, but they don't deserve 90 minutes just to highlight something that's already been widely distributed and isn't even new. Um, so I think it's very important we do go and take a look and, and see if um, the proposers will be amenable to shortening the length if that was the recommendation of many of us. And then the last point, again, I, I, several of us wrote extensive comments. There were some highly ranked proposals, which I ranked very highly, but there was a lack of balance. And it's, it's you know, one example was a panel of 12 people criticizing ICANN, and nobody from ICANN was invited. Uh, there's other cases where you'll have eight people all saying exactly the same thing, all singing the same song, and nobody from the two or three other perspectives that are important. And so, again, I'm, I'm not asking that we throw some of these panels out. I'm just asking how will we make sure that uh, we not only have a balance in proposers, we have a balance in panelists. Um, this wasn't a problem with most of the proposals, but I think a number of us did comment on some of the proposals that uh, needed some additional panelists. So thank, thank, thank you. Uh, it is my intention to allow, allow uh, comments on uh, 60, uh, seeing which, uh, which would need to be uh, shortened and, or, or uh, uh, merged if there will be any, any uh, proposals of that kind. Avri, please. <laughs> thank you, Avri speaking. Um, I, I wanted to just bring up a couple things that I had noticed, and, and one of the things you remarked on was the number, or somebody remarked on, the number of um, the, the panels versus the, 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 the larger formats. And I think in many cases we found somebody taking a panel with lots of people and, and giving it a different name. And, and in some of those, I, I think it's, it's reasonable to perhaps make recommendations if they happen to be in the ones that are selected. I was very uh, taken with, with Virat's proposal of, of the, the extra 20. And, and, but, but taking into account what, what Mike has said, I think it makes sense that in that next 20, they are strong candidates, perhaps, for moving forward, but that there's perhaps a little bit more give and take 
in the whether something is in, moved in. In the, in the top 61, there seems to be a presumption, and I think a very good presumption, that those go forward. Finally, I want to add that uh, two things. One, on, on the civil society, I think it's also important to look at how many other groups became, you know, partners in, in putting something together that just because somebody takes the lead in, in putting in a proposal does not mean that there haven't been other of the, the stakeholder groups participating, and so I think that's important, but I also very much agree that giving advice on how to improve the workshops and, and add people and balance speakers and such is, is a, a very good thing for us to be doing. Thanks. So thank you very much. I, I think we uh, already introduced that practice last year when uh, after selection uh, MAG members uh, who volunteered uh, were uh, given certain number of uh, workshops uh, that, uh, and they uh, coached the uh, uh, organizers and advised them uh, how to improve proposal and how to improve the, the workshop. Uh, let me now turn to remote participant. Okay, Subi, please go ahead. Hey, Chad, um, with, with all the power of the words at, at my command, I, I submit this to the floor that we do not review the criteria at this late stage and change the numbers from 60 and take that up to 81. There are statistics, and thank you for those excellent in-depth analysis of those statistics, but then there are lies and then there are man lies. Excuse my French. Um, I've been a teacher all my life, and I believe that grades are not an adequate reflection of either the content or the substance, in the interest of time and process, I recognize that that is a good way of evaluating things, but it's not perfect. I believe a lot of us are invested in the process, and the review that happens together in this large main hall, uh, with all the MAG members contributing, is stage two of the evaluation process, which builds on the quantitative inputs that we provided to workshops. As somebody from a developing country, and an emerging economy, we've seen, we've come a long way, and I thank Susan, Fiona, and all the colleagues who've contributed to improving the ratings and evaluation process, but I still believe when we look at a cumulative score of one to five, when we have about six or eight parameters, we do end up not giving adequate weightage to either new participants or new topics or diversity. We do tend to at least in our heads, one occasion gets swayed by excellence in presentation, writing, clarity of the proposal, which is not necessarily a guarantee that we're inviting the voices, we're also innovating on formats or building on innovation. So I therefore submit and strongly urge that we continue to retain the principles that we posted online and the chair had um, initiated this discussion on retaining the methodology of looking at 61 upwards and we also look at mergers and possibilities of even those which have made the cutoff clearly because I agree with Mike's comments 100% that we see possibilities of collaboration and also as, as a MAG member I see our goals as mentors and I'd be happy to continue to work with proposals and see how we can make them better that creates more value for participants. Thank you. So thank you, Subi, for your comments. Uh, uh, Sita, please. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> My name is Sita Laksmi from HIVOS. Uh, I would like to seek a clarification on the agenda template uh, sent by Secretariat, because the agenda was made based on 90 minutes, where we also have flash session, which is only 15 minutes, and birds of weather, which is only 30 minutes. Perhaps if we can allocate as well a session below 90 minutes, we can have more than 100 sessions. I don't know. Thank you. No, you're right. This is just a mathematics. And indeed, if we will uh, see that uh, uh, MAG agrees to uh, shorten uh, some of the sessions, uh, we may increase the number of uh, selected workshops from 100 uh, upwards. That's, that's one point. Second point is, as, as you recall, uh, last year we allowed Secretariat uh, to um, uh, discretion of uh, selecting two, three uh, additional workshops 
workshops because uh, there always are circumstances that need, need uh, uh, specific attention and um, uh, Secretariat was given such an authority bringing in two or three uh, uh, workshops. That also is, uh, would be my request to, to the MAG to continue this, this practice and allow Secretariat um, uh, some discretion on very uh, limited number of, of uh, uh, slots. Uh, and, and thirdly, I would uh, suggest that uh, uh, we may also uh, work uh, with, with on, on the reserve list, uh, which uh, would be uh, given given slot uh, uh, as a result of uh, uh, pos possible mergers or, or uh, other de deviations that that may that may happen after the meeting. So th this, these are uh, just additional elements uh, that uh, I would uh, suggest to consider. Uh, Juan Alfonso, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I don't want to repeat here what I uh, stated in a rather long email that I circulated a few days ago. Uh, I only want to reiterate that I support your proposal, and either I think that 40% intervention is, is a bit low, but I think that we, sh we can begin that. I only want to add uh, what a suggestion that came yesterday the possibility of using half of the main sessions, the main sessions of 90 minutes to, to promote workshops to the main hall in, in, in the case of mergers. And if that is the case, we, sh could only, we should also examine the first 60 to see if one of those uh, workshops or merge with some of the other that are below the 60 could be promoted because I think that th uh, even those in the first 60 that, that will pass to the main hall, it's a promotion for, for them. Uh, in this case, I asked yesterday the, the some concept of main sessions that are organized by, by MAG. In this case, if it's, I suggest that if it's, if it's one of these 60 that are promoted to, the, to one of these uh, half main sessions, it could be a joint uh, uh, organization between the proposals of, of that workshop and the MAG. I, I please uh, uh, um, ask to take this variant in, in consideration because it doesn't diminish. I think the workshop proposal will be happy to have it in a wider audience and also incorporating uh, some uh, participants of other workshops of similar topic. And I want to uh, reiterate what I said in my email and Subi uh, 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 just said that we have to take this initial uh, grading by points uh, as a point of start. It's a very useful classification, but it's not the end in itself. Our responsibility is not to automatically grade workshops and select. Our responsibility is to have an IGF, a forum that is interesting to everybody because of the topics, because of the speakers, and because of the inclusiveness that everybody feels represented and that everybody can get out of when the forum finishes, a feeling that this forum is useful for them, for the stakeholder groups, and for everybody. In this sense, uh, also there was a very interesting email circulated by Anna. I suppose that she could speak about that, that uh, uh, she voiced a concern that one special stakeholder group, uh, government, has a very low representation in workshop. <coughs> I think that <coughs> that we should t pay attention to that, especially bearing in mind that this is the year of the renovation. Of, of the of the IGF and and we should take a, a special note that this stakeholder group finds the that the IGF is useful for for government as well not only for civil society and business and academia thank you so thank thank you very much uh, if I may ask uh, go straight to the point uh, because we are really uh, burning our time. On, on, on this conversation. Um, uh, Mark, and then Anna, and then Fiona. 
Yes, thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. First of all, just quickly um, to express support for, for Mike Nelson's points about uh, ensuring that we maximize opportunities for enriching the program through uh, reformatting and uh, fixing problems of uh, supportable proposals that uh, that are deficient in some respects. So, and I appreciate your acknowledgement of that in our in our work uh, today and tomorrow. Um, I just have a quick uh, logistical problem. Is it possible to log in to one's own evaluations? Uh, I, I tried to do that and I couldn't this morning. Um, so I can remind myself of what I said actually on the individual proposals. Is that not possible anymore? Because I didn't print it off or anything. So, Secondly, uh, the spreadsheet uh, Chengata is circulated. For me, that only goes up to, of, of, evalu uh, of evaluation comments, mm -hmm. only goes up to about 35. Is that just a problem at my end? Or could, could the spreadsheet of the comments be recirculated, at least for my benefit? Thank you. Please, Secretary, uh, look at that, and, and um, uh, until then, uh, Mike? Uh, two answers to that question. Uh, the yeah. fact was only about 35 MAG members responded, so that's why there's only 35 evaluations. Are you saying only 35 proposals, or are you saying within each, with the, within each proposal you'll have 35 different reviewers? If you go to the top, you'll see the number of the proposer the proposal, and you have to find the proposal you want. But uh, to find your own comments, you just have to figure out which of those reviewers is you, and then keep going back to that. Okay. Well, we can give you your number if you want. We can give Sorry, you, you, can, you can give me mine? Yes, we can give you your number. And then you can just it. don't give out my number. Yeah, I don't know, just his. <laughs> Okay, Anna, please. Thank you, and, and good morning. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I have several comments, and uh, I hope I will not burn in time, uh, but uh, I think that I have to highlight these points. So, uh, first of all, I think that I have to highlight uh, the problem with, with governments. I don't think it's normal that governments are not so, so involved. Uh, I think it's something that we should think about it because uh, at the end of the day, it will be governments that we are going to decide uh, the future of the I, IGF. So we don't, uh, I think that we have to pay attention to this. Um, another thing that I would like to highlight is the lack of the balance of speakers. It's something that I, I, I raised, I think in 80% of the evaluation I, I, I did. Uh, I don't understand why the, uh, the, um, uh, the proposers didn't uh, uh, propose a balance of speakers. A uh, lot of people from civil society and, uh, and the companies and not um, a mix, I don't understand, so I, I think that we need to improve that a lot. On the flash sessions, it's a totally different thing, I, I think. So we're, we're talking about sessions that are about 15 or uh, 30 minutes, so uh, the time that we have to allocate, it's totally different, and I don't know if the logistic is, is the same as we have to have for the other formats. I don't think it is. Uh, so I think that maybe we have room here to have more sessions. Um, and I think it, that's it. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much. On, on uh, room allocation, please uh, don't worry about that. That is secretarial job. Our job is to, to uh, agree or advise that uh, we will have, for instance, 10 flash sessions, uh, 10 uh, sessions of uh, one hour and the remaining 90 minutes. And then that would be secretarial's job to uh, find find appropriate uh, place and and then and do the, do this thing. Uh, we would of course take that into account and and uh, uh, decrease in number uh, decrease in time of session would allow add ad additional uh, workshop in, especially if that workshop also would uh, have a shorter than 90 minutes time slot. Uh, uh, Fiona and then Zendong. 
Yes, thank you, Giannis. Um, just to maybe start with the last comment, I would agree strongly with the comment that Anna made. I was quite surprised when reading the 250 plus proposals, the lack of stakeholder diversity represented on all of the proposals, in particular the lack of government participants in the sessions. So maybe when we're done with all of this, a suggestion or even a requirement can be made to proposers to make sure that they are, um, sessions are actually balanced and have all stakeholders. But in particular, it was surprising the lack of government speakers that are involved in the sessions. Um, but why I wanted to take the floor was to just remind um, participants in the meeting the process we had agreed to uh, last December and then what we worked on for the two months, January and February. And, you know, Susan, to her credit, did a lot to make all this work. But we're actually in the third stage of our evaluation process. And this is something that we all talked about. This is something that we all agreed about and spent many phone calls and emails discussing. And if you actually look what's on the IGF website and look what's on the MAG page, it says we're going to take the last five or ten slots and make sure we use those to have balance. So I would strongly agree with the comments made by Virat and appreciate his statistical analysis, but for the sake of compromise and to make sure we can go forward and actually get going, maybe we look at 70 or something, or just, but I think it'd be important that we actually just move forward and go forward. And I would suggest to people that if these are concerns that you have for next time, make sure you have this conversation when you're developing the new criteria. After, a fa after the fact, establishing quotas is not particularly transparent. So thank you very much. Uh, Zendong? This is Shadong speaking. Uh, I'm very, very sorry for absence for last day's meeting, but I'm very, very lucky to catch up the discussion for today. So I, ha I have two comments. So if I review the, the, the schedule for, for the four days meeting, I think it's most of the meeting is uh, 90 minutes. So I, I strongly su suggest maybe to allocate more, more time slot for maybe one hour is is be okay f to increase the time slot for more workshop to uh, increase the presence for different communities for their proposals. So I, I think maybe we can increase to from 100 to 120 to 130. So another uh, comment is uh, uh, for the diversity issues. If you look at the top uh, uh, 60 by state group, uh, stakeholder groups, you know, they have multi stakeholder to cover the government, private sector, technical community, and civil society. But now there is a lack of the uh, representative from technical community and, and government and uh, and private sector, uh, a lot of discussion from civil society. I mean, it's, it's, it's good for civil society to, to give more presence in this uh, forum, but I, I strongly suggest we, we need to discuss the, the ban to balance the multi stakeholder, to form, I mean, balance the proposal from different stakeholders. And uh, we know that we, we have a lot of discussion about the policy issues, but we need also to, to think about how to find a technical solution. We need to hear more voice from from the technical community and academia. It should be better for us to 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 further thinking about the solution. And another uh, diversity issue is uh, now I think I saw the percentage from from developing countries. I think it's it's good to about 40 percent. But I strongly suggest to, to increase the presence for developing countries. And we, I, I'm not sure what's the the percentage for for different region and different you know, users. So, so maybe we also need to know how many uh, proposals from different regions, especially for Asia Pacific. I, I, I think that we, we also need to strongly think about how many proposals from the developing country, especially for them, some big countries from have a lot of users. We need to know more about what happened and to, to hear more voice from the, uh, this community. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, uh, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will be brief. I just wanted to come in and support the comments made by both Anna and Fiona with respect to uh, the low level of government participation, but also Fiona's comment on process I think is really important that we understand. There was a group that worked very, very hard, um, and we did decide on the process, and we are now at the stage we're in. I've heard the word problem used a couple of times with respect to the top 60, and I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, 
digesting that because I think you know we should be praising these top 60 proposals for, for scoring so highly. Uh, you know, it was a we we went and we had these criteria. We've seen a huge increase in what we wanted to increase participation by developing countries, new first-time proposers, and some of the other criteria we set forward. And so I think rather than looking for problems with those, um, you know, we should focus on ones that can be fixed and can also move up forward. I think with respect to mergers, uh, very quickly as well, we definitely need some more guidance on the merger process, just based on my involvement in trying to help merge two workshops last year that didn't work. Um, so I think we need to understand why it is we want to merge two uh, before we, we move forward with that so that we understand what criteria it is we're trying to achieve. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, may I, may I um, uh, suggest that we uh, stop commenting or, or, or provide comments of general nature, but uh, we go on with the uh, selection process. Uh, I, uh, I heard uh, clearly, and this is, uh, I, I think, uncontested understanding that uh, we need to search for balance and balance on number of uh, uh, issues, uh, the participation of uh, different stakeholder groups. We heard technical community is underrepresented. We heard uh, governments uh, are underrepresented. Uh, equ equally, we have a certain disbalance on themes, and we may want to uh, bring uh, uh, or improve, uh, let's say, ratio of our sub-themes uh, that, that we have. and. Um, uh, the, the way how we should proceed uh, in this respect is uh, as follows. So now we would start uh, reviewing uh, all 60, uh, listening those MAG members who have uh, something to suggest in relation to first 60, uh, whether a decrease in, in um, uh, uh, time uh, or, or something. Uh, uh, I would like also to ask you, do not touch uh, in every of those 60 proposals um, question of um, participants who will be speaking. All that should be reviewed and, and I, would, I would advise that um, uh, MAG members would uh, coach uh, all, all the uh, workshop proponents. Uh, and uh, would, uh, we would provide clear guidance that uh, uh, the multi-stakeholder representation uh, should be uh, ensured uh, by our needs. Uh, so that would allow us just to look on uh, length and see which of the, of the proposed uh, 60 workshops would be uh, 90, 60, 30, 30 minutes. After that, we would uh, uh, look at uh, next uh, 10, going, uh, just taking from 61 to 70, uh, and seeing whether there are any objections to add those, those in. And after that, we would go, uh, we would start balan balancing as um, on stakeholder groups, and I would like to ask uh, MAG members to uh, be ready uh, to make very concrete proposals in relationship of those underrepresented either uh, stakeholder groups or uh, sub teams that we can that we can examine those proposals uh, and and of course uh, we, we need not to uh, see I mean we would not to uh, avoid or be afraid to uh, to, uh, to pull up uh, some some uh, which is scored very low uh, provided that uh, proposal is really unique, either unique in terms of uh, theme or unique in other, uh, another way of uh, suggesting to, uh, according to our criteria. Uh, at the same time, uh, most probably this balancing act, we should look at those uh, proposals uh, that have been uh, reasonably high scored as well. So by saying this, uh, I would uh, uh, like to really engage uh, in substantive discussion and uh, would not like to prolong uh, general comments because we will, uh, we heard most of, of uh, what, what we need to uh, look at 
and I think uh, we, we should proceed with a, uh, with a, with a real, real scoring, a real selection. Virat. Mr. Chairman, I, um, I don't want to burn up any more time, but I do wish to um, ask for a clear set of objectives that we are now setting ourselves up because the exercise can't be a um, solution in search of a problem. Um, at this time, based on the figures that have been put up um, by the Secretariat, um, the technical communities have put in a total of 12% and at 80 they are at 12%. The private sector is at 10%, they put in 12% of the total proposals. The government is actually higher. The government only put in 4% of the total proposals. They have 5% in the top 80. IGOs are slightly lower. They have 6.7%, but they're in at 5%. So if you're now saying that we don't have diversity, which is at complete odds with all the charts that are being displayed, and we don't have enough newcomers, which is also at odds with the charts that are being displayed, and we don't have developing countries, which is also at odds with all the charts that are being displayed, then we better get ourselves a new set of objectives before we start this. I'm going to, I'm going to, we should start, no problem, but I think we should have clear two or three objectives now, because the objectives that have been stated about new voices won't get in, or that there isn't enough diversity of themes, or that there isn't enough uh, new respondents that is not true based on the evidence that the Secretariat has put up. So if you can just agree on two or three things that we want to achieve, we can start at 61 and go there. But I just want to make sure that we have a new set of specific objectives, which are different from the ones that we set ourselves in December, because those have been achieved in these numbers. Thank you. So thank you, Michael. I'm glad Virad brought this up. Uh, the thing that really concerned me was that we have some very strong proposals that are below the 100 cutoff with brand new ideas, things that we've never had an IGF session about. And for whatever reason, they did not get well reviewed, often because these people who proposed it are not well known to us. So I think, while well, you're right, we've done a great job, better than ever before, of meeting many of our criteria. The one thing that really is important, to me at least, is bringing new ideas to the discussion. The other thing that's very important is more government participation, and not government proposals, government panelists. And again, if you look at many of the sessions that I ranked very highly, that other people did not, they were ones that had a number of government proposed uh, panelists. And so I think those are two criteria I'd like to see. The other thing I remind people is, if in our criteria that were published, we said that we would look for about 10 proposals that were below the cutoff line. If we make the cutoff line at 80, we are now telling the people between 80 and 100 that their chances of getting accepted are less than 50%. So I think we have to look at, the, at the, 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 the sessions between 60 and 100 and then figure out which of those are, are redundant and not necessary so that we can bring up those 10 proposals that are brand new ideas, things we've never seen before. Look, uh, there is no ideal solution to that. And, and I think that uh, we should not also look purely mathematically. Uh, all we do, we are managing perceptions. And uh, if perception is that government representation or government proposed workshops are not enough, uh, no one will uh, seek uh, information how many or percentage terms uh, from total proposals were proposed by governments. They will say governments were underrepresented and uh, uh, the same will apply for every other uh, multi-stakeholder or stakeholder group. That's point one. The, sa the same applies for, for teams. 
I, I fully appreciate uh, that there, there are objective criteria, uh, uh, but, but still we need to introduce some subjectivity because that, that is uh, our, our job. We need to write, uh, seek for balance. And balance is not objective. Balance is always subjective. And uh, uh, so let us, let us uh, uh, go down uh, to work, and then we will see. We can review this theoretical discussion once, once we have maybe uh, 90 workshops uh, uh, agreed and then see whether, whether the balance is right or not, and then, uh, then take, take uh, uh, this discussion further. But I would uh, encourage to really go down to um, uh, real, real uh, decision-making now. Susan. Thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> I understand the, the rationale of accepting um, the first 60 and just discussing the time. Uh, the time slots, um, but I'd just like to make a point um, that Avri made earlier is that a number of the top 60 proposals are what I would, I would say a panel in disguise, and that's kind of my own, my own notes, my own note taking when I was going through um, the grading. So there are a number of proposals that were submitted in formats different than panels, but are, and in essence, um, seem to be panel sessions. So I would just ask that um, if we could have a bit of flexibility to discuss some of these sessions, which are essentially panels, but are proposed as round tables. Um, um, if we could just take keep that in mind. Thank you. So thank you. Can we go to the discussion, Avri? Thank you. Just one quick practical point, which is half of the membership of MAG is from governments. So if they can help us recruit the missing government participants in these panels, roundtables, or what have you, that might be helpful as a later step and not worry about it now. Thanks. Uh, thank you. It's exactly what I was saying. Don't worry about uh, uh, speakers now. We will worry about once for those who will be selected. Uh, can we move on? Chen can we? Please just yeah. just one, one, one minute one minute coming. I think it's maybe we can use a very simple way. We can review how many proposals from different community. And maybe we can just review the, the maybe top, top 50 or top 20 of proposals from different community. And then give some flexible number for, for different community to, 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 to cover the balance issues. Thank you. Okay. So let's let's go down to the work 60 60 uh, top 60 please any uh, comments on top 60 related to length uh, related to uh, formats uh, of proposals very concrete uh, and and please when you, when you intervene mention the uh, title and the number that we can all of us uh, could go quickly to, to uh, uh, to the proposal and secretariat, I would like you to follow uh, the discussion and scroll up and down screen that we have also those uh, proposals on, on the screen. Juan Infoso, please. Thank you, Chairman. My intervention is to sort of an example of what I think that we should do right now. If you see the number three in that list, that is uh, workshop 97, that is the third highest scorer, how to bridge the global internet economy divide. Uh, and it's proposed just as a, I think it's a flash uh, thing. This is one of the workshops that I think that we could promote to the main, main session. Uh, many persons here uh, have talked about the importance of, of in, internet economy and the, the name of this uh, workshop, I think it could be promoted and, and also enhanced with some other that we can find in the, in the 60, the first 60 that also deals in, in this. I, 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 I check out, because I have it here, I have to move all, all up and down and of course we can do, do this collectively, but this is a proposal. This, this we can get one of the 90 minute slot of the main session and move that there and join with that some other that are uh, in the same topic if you read down 
Well, uh, now I don't find it is something. Uh, okay. Well, a anyway, uh, that that's a, co a concrete proposal, and we can do that with any of these first 60 that it has a real uh, overarching uh, topic and, and we can promote it. I like the word promotion because this is not merging. This is promoting this workshop to a higher category in the main hall with given even more time and with the collaboration of some other panelists or proposals of some other words. I, I, I suggest to, to do uh, this exercise and see, of course, nothing of this will be written in stone. We could, at the end, go back if we feel that th there's some other better uh, line of action. But I, I suggest this. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, any reaction to proposal? Abri? Thank you. I have, I have a practical question in terms of how does one do this promotion? The person that put it together thought of it as, as a flash. That, that's the concept we had. Are we saying that we're going to somehow take it over and turn it into a session? Uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a form of micromanaging the, the session that I don't understand exactly how we would do. Thanks. Uh, Herman Fossa, could you, could you explain how uh, Yesterday, you uh, and you can excuse me because I'm new in this, but yesterday I asked about the, what is the qualities of, of main sessions, and I was told that main sessions are organized by MAG. I think that what you said is exactly what I mean. I think that we, it's not that we take over, but in conjunction with the proposal and with other proposals of similar uh, topics uh, of, of workshop to agree between all in, 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 a, in a format with more time, I'm talking about 90 minute slots, uh, maybe it could be a combination of a panel with uh, audience participation, I don't know, we can do that. That's why we're here. I think that when the chairman asked us to coach, <coughs> we have to do it anyway, even with, uh, with uh, accepted worship as they are. But in this case, that we are promoting it, uh, I think that we can uh, engage with, with them uh, and in a mutual uh, agreement way, find uh, the way of this uh, do it. Uh, I'm always, as Mike Nelson said, with the idea of promoting new ideas to enrich discussion and in the end to make an, a, a forum more interesting for everybody. So thank you for this explanation. I, I understand what you're saying. You're saying that, that this this would be a, a workshop that uh, or, or flash session that could contribute to the main session, provided that we will decide to have internet economy uh, as one one of the main uh, themes for the main session. But I don't think uh, you would like to. Um, uh, uh, delete this from the list of uh, flash sessions uh, as, as such. So th th that would be rather penalizing than, than promoting them. Uh, but uh, I, I, I see, I hear what you say, and if we will decide to have um, this topic in the main session, we certainly would uh, 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 ask uh, proponents of this uh, flash session to contribute to the uh, to the main session. Okay. Uh, further, uh, further comments. Not on this topic any longer, but on on new new things. Um, uh, Marilyn, please, and then Michael. Thanks. And then um, Hassan. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm having difficulty opening um, the workshop proposal. I can only open about 70 of them. So my question, my technical question uh, to the Secretariat, I think others may be having that problem as well. Uh, but, but I just wanted to make a comment. Perhaps when we run into a situation like the one we just did, we could have a category of parking something and coming back to it. So. Um, particularly on the flash sessions, since they're going to take up smaller slices of time, um, if we could uh, quickly go through those and see if we have any issues about them, uh, perhaps that would also be a way to expedite this. Um, 
but I want to repeat something that Aubrey said. If a proposer, um, and this one did, identified a flash session, I would be a little bit reluctant for the MAG to uh, actually um, make significant changes into a larger session since we have many sessions that we want to um, um, reduce from 90 minutes to 60 or even 30. Uh, Marilyn, I was I was base, basing my calculations on the Secretariat's report. The Secretariat, uh, during the uh, last conference call, said we have, if we accept all open forum proposals and best practice streams, we had 91 uh, uh, slot available. I take that that includes already calculation whether that is a flash or not flash or 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 or, or, or whatnot. So we added, uh, we uh, changed the structure of the meeting, we added 10 additional. So one disappeared in translation at, for the discretion of secretariat. So we're talking about 100. Uh, so I assume that, that uh, proposed flash sessions are calculated in that 100. If not, then Secretariat will correct us. So therefore, uh, our task is now to see whether sessions among uh, first 60, who, uh, which were proposed as a 90-minute sessions, would deserve those 90 minutes, according to your opinion, or should we propose uh, to diminish the, the uh, time allocated for that and uh, turn it in a, in a shorter session? So with that in mind, the uh, floor is open for uh, proposals. Michael. Just to close on this idea of promoting sessions, um, I do think there are at least two proposals in the top 60 that could be promoted, but they're already 90-minute proposals, and I, I, I think we should talk about that later after we've collected a, um, a list of ones that we think might be useful. I, I would oppose taking a flash session, which we ranked very highly, partly because it was a flash session and it will only take 30 minutes. Um, but we should consider Juan's proposal when we get to that stage. Um, the session I was particularly interested in was one on, on encryption, and I think that is a hot topic. It was ranked 25th. Um, uh, proposal number 53. Uh, yes, Chengita, please. About the calculation of the flash sessions, etc., we did not calculate the flash sessions because, for example, in the top 60, um, there's two flash sessions. So we just left it as the leeway because it's kind of difficult to calculate possible um, with flashes, but it doesn't make that much difference. It just gives us a leeway of one. Okay, thank you. So we have now a full picture. Still, that, that does not really change the 100 that we would opt for. Uh, Hassan, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I reiterate what Marlon said because we are not able to view the rest of the proposal's uh, descriptions. So if there is a possibility to help us on that, uh, this would be great. And now, as an example, I don't know, there is a proposal uh, number 132 which is uh, uh, transnational due process, a case study in multi-stakeholder cooperation. It's uh, to, to present uh, internet and jurisdiction uh, project. So it's mainly um, a representation of that project and discussion about it. And I think it could take less than 90 minutes. Thank you. So 132, which, uh, which number? Uh, uh, place it, 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 it has. It's like 28 or 27, something around 28. 28. Yeah, 28. So, opinion of others. In the meantime, can, can Secretariat fix the technical problem? So the problem is that you want to view the workshop proposals. OK, we can do two things. We can, first of all, we send out the PDF of the workshop proposals, um, if that might help. And you want it to be available on the website as well. Correct. Yeah, so we'll do those two things. I mean, that's So uh, proposal is to um, cut the time uh, for uh, 132 
on the website. Uh, from 90 minutes to yeah. one hour or 30 minutes? One hour. Objections? I hope that Secretariat is taking note on that. Okay, thank you. Decided. A remote participant. So we are here. Please go ahead. Okay, it uh, seems that we have a technical problem with yeah, yeah. the SUBI as well. Uh, any, any further uh, comments on um, first 60 high score proposals? Hossam? Any, any further comments on this? I see none. Michael? Just a minute to see the proposals because we don't have them. Yeah, we can bring it up on the screen if they want. So I, I, I understood from, from the uh, uh, general conversation that uh, uh, MAG members have a very good idea which uh, proposals from 60 should be uh, shortened. And uh, for the moment, uh, we, we heard only one proposal. Are there any other workshops that, uh, in opinion of MAG, uh, should be shortened? So is Subi now available? Let's see, Subi? Okay, it doesn't work. Subi, you have the floor. If you can uh, unmute yourself. that we have problem with Subi. I hope not with her, but with the connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay. If we do not have further comments on 60, uh, I, I assume that uh, we could move uh, to the next uh, to the next 10. Uh, which is 61 to seven, 70 highest uh, highest scores. So if if we look at, at those 10. 61 to 70.
Do we have any any comments uh, on on those? Mark. Thanks, Chair. Sorry, it's not a comment. It's just on the process. I mean, can we make sure that we're all looking at? Can we go through them one by one, and then you know? I mean, part of the problem with the, f the first exercise with regard to the top 60 is I couldn't really respond because I'd have to go through each one, actually. <laughs> I, I wasn't prepared, really, for, the, for this morning to be able to uh, comment on any of the 60. I, s I just assumed we were going to go through them one by one, you know, not uh, with the risk of endless debate on any individual one, but quickly one by one, so we can look at the evaluation comments and then uh, react, and also remind ourselves if we had proposed a shortening, a reformatting, and so on. So that's that was the problem with the first 60 for me in terms of the process. But uh, as we're now on to the next 10, am I right in thinking we're looking at uh, proposal 23? Is that right? Or am I totally wrong? Thank you. In my, in my, uh, according to my table that was uh, circulated yesterday by Chengatai, uh, number 61 uh, is the, uh, the right to protect online, uh, 159. Look, uh, the, I think that there is no point of going, uh, going through uh, one by one of uh, top 60. That was the meaning of that, not to spend time on that, except that if there, if there are any specific proposals related to top 60, so then we would discuss those proposals. If we're not ready yet, maybe we could, we could proceed with uh, uh, those who are now uh, scored uh, beyond 60, 61 and onwards, and then revisit uh, uh, first 60 uh, in the afternoon very quickly. Uh, hoping that then we would be uh, prepared for, for, for that. Um, we can we can do uh, we can do that way. And actually, 60 um, uh, 60 first is not not the right to protect online, but tech related gender violence and freedom expression. Chairman, can I give a proposal? Uh, yes, please. And may I suggest a way, because we, we are counting with 100 slot at, at least. So uh, I think that we, sh uh, I agree with you that this should be an iterative process. Mm -hmm. So because what we are looking now, the, the, the stable, the basic solution is that the first 100 is the first that's going to be there. So I think that we should begin in 101 going down to see if something below, as Mike Nelson said, that deserves to be moved to the 100. And then we will have to look in the, in the 100, in the last 40, which one to substitute by this one. Ooh. I think that because otherwise, uh, how can we say, take out some something from the first hundred if we don't know if it deserves to be substituted uh, by somebody? That, that's a way. We could do it also cleaning slots, you know, from the first hundred and then try to fill it from the other one. But uh, maybe to go to the first that are out to see if there's some reason to consider to get in, whether it's the stakeholder, whether it's a new idea, whether it's a new format, or, or something. So the, this is what we will be doing. Uh, but but uh, after we would examine first uh, six, 60 to 70, so that would give us 30, 30 additional slots. Then we would uh, start talking about uh, uh, which stakeholder group, which theme, uh, which topic has not been covered and, and would identify them, put them on the list. And then uh, once we would uh, examine all those uh, 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 questions, we would see how many of those proposals we have. And if we would have, uh, for instance, uh, 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 30, we would be fine. If we would have uh, uh, 20, then we would uh, take those 20 and then add uh, 10 highest scored uh, from, from the list. And, and then again, uh, looking for the balance all the time. 
this is my this is my proposal based on uh, what we discussed uh, about an hour. Lynn, are you in agreement? I am in agreement, yes. And I was actually going to make one suggested refinement for the first 60 proposals. Is if the MAG is actually going to coach those 60 proposals, perhaps we can identify the coaches for those, have the coaches go away and look at the proposals which they're going to coach, and take any further refinements there so that we don't have to tie up the full MAG with those 60. So again, I was just trying to carve out a little bit of time from there, but I do support your approach. Yeah, no, this is, this is once, once we will have those uh, 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 selected, selected workshops, then uh, MAG members would volunteer uh, which particular workshops they would like to take uh, and, and to c uh, contact proponents and uh, do refinement of that. Uh, these, these refinements should be based on uh, what we discuss here. Uh, uh, multi-stakeholder participation, plurality of uh, opinions, different perspectives, uh, different geographic representation, and so on. So, and, and then based on that, uh, this uh, uh, advice would be given. Whether proponents would take that advice or not, that's of course is a different story. Uh, uh, Hendong, please. Uh, I, I su uh, support Chairman's uh, suggestion. Uh, I just want to give some numbers for the top 60, and it uh, should be useful for us to s consider the next fo uh, 40s. In the top 60, there are uh, about 41 from the civil society, three from the government and intergovernmental, none from the technical community, and seven from the private sector. So if we consider that for the top 60, I mean that the, the reviewers give a very good score for the for the uh, 60 proposals. We don't need to review one by one. It's, it can be waste time. So for the rest, the 40 uh, time slot, I su suggest we can give more quarter to the different, uh, other uh, communities. That's why I suggest uh, Chairman's suggestion. So thank you. Uh, remote participant, I assume that's a Subi. Uh, no, it's Ginger actually. Okay, so Ginger, uh, please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. We can hear you, Ginger. Please go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. First of all, I just because it's the first time I'm taking the floor, I would like to thank everyone for the efforts for remote participation. In no way do my recommendations or requests for improvement imply that we are not doing the best we can. We're just trying to improve. So thank you very much to everyone. I w would help me very much because unfortunately I did not save my notes before I submitted them. So if I could see my own evaluation sheet, I don't know if it's at all possible to make that, that available because that would really help me uh, see the, how I evaluated them and which ones I noted specifically. Uh, for inclusion if they were missed. As we move forward to try to analyze which ones we might add, I would like to really emphasize my uh, uh, agreement with the chair that we look closely at topics. If we are missing specific topics that should have been included and didn't make it because of some point about the workshop, we could choose them by topic and mentor them to include missing areas for topics. And I also, with uh, the last speaker, agree that we could also look at government uh, proposals, and especially if they deal with topics that are not being dealt with in, in other areas. For instance, there's, there's a one I, I know that was on taxation, and it's something that is, is not dealt with in any of the others. If there are topics we need to deal with, I would like to see that we include the, those materials. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, Ginger. We have a, another one. Uh, uh, Subi is waiting, so uh, perhaps we could. Uh, have yes, now? thank you, thank you, Ginger, and, and uh, please, uh, when time comes, uh, don't hesitate to make your proposals on uh, which workshops should be, should be uh, considered for inclusion, uh, those which are not uh, scored. In, in, in top 100. Uh, Subi, please. 
Chair. Um, just very quickly on what would be the modalities because last year we went when we looked at Top 60 as well as the other workshops when we're looking at renewal or revival. We uh, checked our read, read, read out the numbers and we were supposed to very quickly respond and say whether anybody had a comment about that or not. So I just wanted to understand the modalities of making that intervention online, remotely. And second, on the two proposals by Juan and Hossam on workshop number 132 and the one that ranked the third, there's also a very successful roundtable that was done on human rights. So I don't know if we see about four, at least four good proposals on the dark net and therefore good proposals on digital economy. In case we're looking at making time and we see many similar threats there, are we looking at the possibility of a roundtable for these four flash sessions that could come together and create more space because um, that is promoting them and that is also acknowledging the fact that they're well-written proposals. Two short submissions there. Thank you. And a question. So thank, thank you. Um, I, I, I think um, we should not try to modify the nature of proposals uh, and uh, only if, if uh, uh, there are two very similar proposals addressing the same theme with the same objective, so then our proposal would, would be to merge them. Uh, but um, uh, if these are different, uh, then we should, not, we should not do it in our view. Uh, Fiona, please, you have a proposal? Yes, th uh, thank you very much, Janice. So if I've understood correctly, we've had conversation about the top 60, and we're looking at 61 through 70. And can you just confirm that starts with number 159, the right to protest online? Is that correct? No, actually, that starts with uh, 196, uh, tech-related gender violence and freedom of expression. Gotcha. Okay. So if I'm looking at the next 10, I would suggest that number 196, tech-related gender violence, as well as... Um, uh, 253, no, no, sorry, the one about accessibility, which I now can't find. 253, yeah. Both of those deserve, I think, a conversation because they're both different topics and I don't think we're presented. So that would be my recommendation as we consider those two. Thank you. Uh, your recommendation is that we consider those positively. Okay. So uh, shall, shall we uh, look at um, uh, 196? Any objection for, retain, for retaining this? Uh, any comments? Virat? Not on this one, but I have a different uh, uh, point. Uh, I think it was mentioned that technical communities are not uh, in the top 60. Actually, that chart is wrong. If I could just ask the, if I could just ask them to bring the chart back up, we should be careful. Not this one, the other one. Uh, this one, there, there is something wrong with this chart, but because actually um, technical communities uh, contribute 15% of these proposals. So I don't know why that thing is not showing up. It's showing up in uh, five colors, but actually it should be six. So there is, so we should be careful. This graphic is slightly off. There's something I can't quite tell. If you look at the chart that you put next to it. Yeah, so if you look at the table to the left there, you have one category being the non-selected. Yeah, so that one just followed with the top 100, but it has a zero here, and that's why you have um, a zero percent there, for example, because you have technical community represented there at 15 percent. Right, but that's so... I just wanted to make sure that you said it is there. Yeah. The community is there at 15 percent. I'm sorry, I thought there was a comment made that the community was zero. Oh, no, no. It, it is there. there. Yeah. So that, that was one. So it, it, it is there. But my comment about moving ahead is sort of rather than looking at proposals, is it possible to look at themes that or sub-themes that we think are underrepresented? Because if you're going to, it's going to get very subjective. If you're going to look at 
individual proposals to move up. We should really try and concentrate on sub-themes that we think are underrepresented to bring in proposals in that theme because then they can compete with each other rather than there should be an objective criteria of how we are picking stuff that we want to bring up rather than a proposal that we like um, because all we have in front of us right now is a, is a one-liner for, for us to respond and say no objection or objection we have to go back to the full proposal then and read that. So that's, I just want to be careful about the fact that we are not putting up proposals which are of individual liking, but rather than sub-themes that we think are underrepresented uh, in the discussion. Unfortunately for that, the sub-themes are actually very well represented. Uh, almost all of them are represented. So I just wanted to bring our attention back on a subjective criteria for bringing in what we think is missing um, before we proceed proposal by proposal. Marilyn. Thanks, Chair. Marilyn Kate. Let me build on that. Uh, I, um, I think, um, and I think it also is in line with um, at least one of the workshop uh, that Fiona Alexander mentioned. Uh, there's a number of workshops lay lower than 61 or 80 that focus on gender uh, participation. And I think that actually um, I'd like to look at uh, inclusiveness of gender, those gender workshops, even if they needed to be merged. The other thing I'll comment on is uh, participation at the local and national and regional levels, not just um, by uh, through the um, uh, IGF initiatives, I think also deserves a bit of a look as uh, something that may be missing. And I say that because I find in my work with developing countries, um, both businesses and governments, that there's very strong interest in what is going on at the national and local level. So those are two ideas that build on the idea that um, was just mentioned as maybe we could identify a couple of thematic gaps. Uh, they may be the wrong term to use right now, but issue gaps, identify then some workshops further down and see if it's worth trying to merge them uh, to move them up into the slots. So gender inclusion, inclusion uh, let me be clear, uh, inclusion of women, uh, and sorry, men, and secondly, uh, local and uh, national activities, not just the initiatives. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, MAG members will, uh, based on that, will make those proposals. And this is how it, sh it should work. So uh, we, we, we go now uh, from 61 to 70 and seeing if, if we can agree to include those uh, 10 on, on the list. And then, and then we go either by topics or by stakeholder groups and pull up uh, or pull out from, from, the, uh, from the list those that MAG members uh, think need to be considered and put them on the uh, potential uh, inclu inclusion list. And then we see how uh, many of those uh, MAG members will identify and I assume that uh, all MAG members uh, have looked and uh, have come prepared to, to the meeting with, with a very clear idea which workshops need to be uh, uh, approved and pulled up and, 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 or discussed or should be discarded and, and, and so on. So I, I really rely on uh, your knowledge and, and in your opinion because this is not a secretariat-driven process. It is not a chairs-driven process. It's a MAG member-driven process, please. So, uh, and uh, with that in mind, uh, we have a remote participant. So you please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. A uh, couple of interventions. I support uh, at the outset uh, reviewing uh, 
the proposal workshop that Fiona just mentioned on gender. I think uh, it's a fairly good proposal and it's just below the cutoff mark, it can be reviewed. I also disagree with the approach that was just outlined, which says we should go thematically. I believe all grading processes are subjective. I do feel a greater sense of comfort if we go by number, where they're not necessarily supposed to comment on each workshop, only if a bag member believes that the workshops falling below the 60 mark, there is a particular workshop that needs to be revived and for the reason stated, we can all look at it collectively. Um, I don't think that means we're doing a review of all the workshops and that makes the proposal process review subjective. I think it's the other way around and then we're trying to do a balance of themes. I, I find that more artificial because it's a reflection of the interest of the community the number of proposals that are made under a particular topic. So two suggestions I support if we go by number and in case we feel that there's a workshop that can be reviewed or revived that is looked at and one uh, supporting Fiona's proposal workshop to be reviewed. So thank you, Subi. Um, Michael? Um, I agree with Subi. I think it's impossible at this point to decide, okay, here are five themes that are underrepresented because we won't even agree on what the theme is and how to define it. We just have to get in here and start going through and saying, this one's worthy, this one's worthy, this one's worthy. And let me do that. Um, I, I want to also agree with Fiona and Subi. I thought uh, proposal number 169 on... Um, uh, gender violence and revenge porn was outstanding. It was a new, fresh way of looking at it. Um, I also thought that uh, proposal number 147, which was ranked 63rd uh, on a network of virtual working spaces for internet governance, is also new, very practical. It's something we're obviously struggling with right here as we try to build a virtual space that Subi and Ginger can use. And uh, I would also like to support, um, uh, what was the other one within this? Um, number 178 is beyond the tipping point, safer internet day in the global south. And this is not a normal format. I think it would be an interesting, because it's a, it's a breakout session, it's a discussion group. It's exactly the kind of thing that you can't get from just watching a panel discussion. It's the kind of thing that only can happen at an IGF. Um, and so those are three examples for me of things that um, are, are unique and new. Uh, I'd also like to uh, point out, uh, I guess it's, let's see, um, Number 70, which is ranked 75th, is called Death and the Internet Managing Digital Legacies. I know that's in the next block of 10, but it's one that I would like to see promote, uh, included in the process. And if you would allow me, um, there is another session in the top 60, which I think at least four of us thought could be shortened to a flash session or a... Um, at least a 60-minute session, and that was the uh, session on African rights. Um, the reason we weren't able to respond immediately to your request for flash sessions is we didn't want to stand up and say, I think we wanted to be able to look at everybody else's comments. So section 696, at least four of us thought that that was not a large enough topic, a large enough focus. It was focused on one particular project, and uh, I would propose that number 96 be considered for a 60-minute session. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is exactly what, what I, I think we should do, like the proposal by, by, by Michael. So proposal 90, uh, uh, session 96, uh, uh, number, number 37, or sc scored on, on, on 36 place, sorry, 36 place. African uh, internet rights. Proposal is to uh, uh, lower it, I mean, uh, shorten it to 60 minutes. Any objections? Virat. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm sorry, when you say many, any objections, we'll have to go read up the proposal. This is a really 
to, I, time you have to give us time then. We can't, I mean, five proposals were just named. I can name another five, and then we'll have 30 proposals. People just can't put up their hands. They have to go read up each proposal. So okay, can, can, I, can, we get, can we get the proposal on the screen? Would that help? Yeah, because that, I mean, we can't do, it's just an exercise in fertility. If you're asking for, so can, can we get proposal uh, workshop number 96 on the screen? Mark? Thanks very much, uh, Chair. Yes, 96, um, uh, if you, for my colleagues, um, you'll see my comment at number 25, exactly in line with, with Mike Nelson. This is extremely valuable, but a 60-minute session is the right um, time allocation. I also suggested that um, uh, the declaration be circulated as a document to inform prospective IGF attendees uh, beforehand and there be a room document. Um, I, have, I have a proposal on 196, but do you want to do that uh, separately? Thank you. Yeah, we will do uh, separately 196. Avery? Yeah, on, on 96, the one we're talking about, um, this, this has been very much a subject in, in Africa this year, this, this, this declaration, and I think it would be a pity to, you know, take away 30 minutes of conversation on it. I, I really just don't see the value in, in shortening it by, by 30 minutes. This, this has been a very large conversation. It's a very ongoing discussion in Africa, and for us to sort of say it, it, it doesn't merit a full 90 minutes just seems difficult to me. Thanks. So thank you. Uh, Jack? I just wanted to support what Avery was saying as well. It is quite a big and important topic, um, and it actually isn't quite as narrow as um, it was uh, that it, it um, um, I guess, appears to be. And the other thing also is just a reminder that the PDF was um, sent and circulated in the list with all of the workshop proposals that maybe we can just go back to the list and pull it out. It will really help um, just linking through what we're discussing here and reading the full proposals as well so that it doesn't just appear as um, titles. And the other thing is to also support um, Subi's comment in that I think sub-themes is not uh, the best way to really go forward because a lot of things get mushed into sub-themes and sometimes sub-themes is also a little bit of a subjective thing in which, um, which workshop proposal you choose to be slotting under. So I think looking at it in terms of the the topic is much more um, precise in that sense. Um, and in with that, I will support the one on gender and also the one on um, accessibility and disabilities. Um, uh, but I'll just go through it one by one But for that, um, for now. So thank you very much. Uh, Chengita has an uh, information, please. Uh, I'll just say that I, um, I just resent the PDF, so you should have it. Um, I sent it about 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you. Um, Michael? Uh, this is to respond to Avery. Um, I, I fully agree that uh, talking about Africa is incredibly important. Uh, my concern here is about how we handle proposals that are just about one project and one group of people. Um, there's a lot of proposals that were in that category, and um, most of them I was recommending be as flash sessions. I do think the declaration is important, but it was also broadly discussed in Istanbul. There was a booth set up to talk about it. It was a widely discussed topic. And so the question we have to ask is whether there should be 90 minutes devoted to one particular project and to look at the progress made on that project in one year. Um, I'm happy to take the other alternative, which would be to say to the organizers, is there a way to broaden this proposal so it's not just about the declaration? And it's not just people promoting one particular thing. So we are still on 96. Uh, Cheryl? I support Avery's proposal to leave it at the 90 minutes. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. I, I think we should then uh, uh, stay with 90 minutes because uh, uh, seems that there is no consensus on shortening of that. Uh, can we agree on that? Can we ask them to do something more than just focus on the we declaration? Can, we can. We can ask. We can ask to. Uh, uh, to increase the scope of, of the conversation uh, on, on the topic. Yes, I, I hope the Secretariat is taking notes and uh, that, that, we, that we decide here. Okay. Any other, any other uh, comments on uh, top 60? Marilyn, no. Uh, then shall we shall we go 190, uh, 196, workshop 196. Fiona, you you suggested that we need to discuss it. Could you start discussion? Sure. Um, I just thought it was interesting. I think um, someone else has already commented on this. Maybe it was Mike. This is an interesting and new topic, and I thought it was one that uh, merited inclusion in the process. So thank you. Any other comments on 196? Mark? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Well, yes, I agree. I scored it highly, uh, and it's invaluable um, to have this uh, um, proposal included in the program. You'll see from my comment uh, that uh, I, I de de determined a linkage to the Best Practice Forum on Countering Abuse Against Women Online. And as this proposal is based around research uh, undertaken by UFBA and Internet Lab, I, I, I was unique in suggesting that actually we reduce this uh, time allowance in order to have this proposal reformatted as, a, as an input into the best practice forum so that uh, I, I suggested a 30-minute flash session for UFBA and Internet Lab to present their uh, research and then it, it's an input into the best practice forum. So we, we retain it, but also we, uh, we ensure that uh, you know, there's, there's time freed up for other proposals that are, are going to be um, more challenging and meriting full 90-minute min, sessions. So that was my suggestion. But I see from the comments it was unique. But I do see one or two other comments saying that uh, uh, the, uh, the aim of, of the session was not uh, clearly identified. But as I say, I, I think it should be in the program. Thank you. So thank you very much, Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. Marilyn Cade speaking. I, um, I support Mark's comments, uh, but I uh, need to be clear that I also, and all of the um, proposals to present research, uh, suggested that they become flash sessions or that they be shortened in length um, because uh, research, uh, the time will be taken up to present research, it's valid. I do think it feeds into um, the work of the Dynamic Coalition, um, so I'd like to see it shortened um, but retained. Um, and I do think um, Given the um, the topic that's being covered, um, a flash session to of, of 30 minutes or a session of 60 minutes seems um, more suitable. So thank you, Cheryl. I support including it, and perhaps the, we can figure out later timing in terms of working with the uh, organizers. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. Um, I support inclusion as well, and I think that what is actually what would help this um, session is the invitation of private sector stakeholders that they intimated at the bottom that they would like to do that would actually turn it much more into a conversation rather than just a presentation of um, research. And in fact, there are four research that has been identified rather than two, so I would say 60 minutes rather than 30. Um, and yes, to linking it with the BPF work. Okay, we have uh, then a uh, consensus that this should be uh, included, uh, 196 should be included, uh, shortening to 60 uh, minute session uh, and uh, uh, linking it to best practice uh, forum on uh, the topic. Uh, shall we move to the next one, 126, Marilyn?
No? 126, can we put it on the, uh, on the screen? Can internet rights and access goals be reconciled? Any comments? Michael? Uh, this is a little bit of process, but last year what was so successful was to actually see which ones at least one of us was willing to speak up for. And this was one of the ones that I'm not willing to speak up for, and maybe the silence means there's no need to do it. I, I think just asking which of these top ten people want to speak up for should be sufficient. I just want to avoid being in a situation where silence was consent, and then later on we have to knock out something to find room for a really good proposal. Uh, okay. So we will be look, looking for a sponsor of every proposal, uh, but with understanding that that sponsor would not have vested interest in the proposal. Fiona, and then Mark. Yeah, it would just be helpful, at least for me, I don't know, for others to get some clarification. So my understanding of where we started and what we're doing. So we spent many months developing an elaborate process to review workshops at which we're not willing to fully accept the results of, which, you know, that's fine. That's where the group is. So we've taken the first 60. Now we're taking the first, the next 10 and saying, are they okay to include? And then we have 30 more slots, at which point you're going to ask everyone in the mag to pr propose the five or ten that they want. If that's what we're doing, why don't we just admit clearly that's what we're doing, which is fine, I have no problem with that. But I'd like to clearly understand what the exercise is, because if the question is, do we accept the next ten, so now we've got to 70, we have 30 slots left, perhaps the next step then is for MAG members to take the lunch break and to come back from the lunch break, and before that, send on the list the five or ten workshops they think we should all be talking about. Then we wouldn't have to go through these one by one, but we could clearly have a composite list of everyone's favorite or most focused or whatever criteria you think we're missing so that we have a composite of what we're looking at. Because I feel like we keep going back and forth between different approaches and I think just being clear with what we're doing would be useful at least for me. Let me, let me uh, reiterate what I uh, said before starting this, this, uh, uh, this part of the exercise, that we would, uh, based on our general exchange, where we had a suggestion to automatically accept uh, 80, uh, so I struck, I propose compromise 70, which is not really automatic, but quasi-automatic, and this is what we're trying to do. After that, and I hope that we will conclude this exercise by one, after that, we will have two hours of lunch, during which uh, MAG members will review their uh, grade, grades and evaluations, and uh, we would uh, talk about uh, underrepresented uh, issues. Either that is underrepresented governmental, uh, or uh, thematic, or subthematic uh, proposals. And we would... Um, uh, listen proposals coming out from MAG on different uh, identified disbalances. We would uh, look through the proposals and we would constitute the possible inclusion list uh, only on those identified uh, categories. And uh, we will see how long this uh, list would, will, will, will be whether that list will be uh, 10 or 15 or 20 or 30. And then, based on, based on that, uh, we would decide how to proceed further. And with that, we would, ha we would try to correct those uh, apparent or perceived disbalances that we have now when uh, we see that uh, governments are underrepresented, that the technical community might be underrepresented, that some themes might be uh, underrepresented. So that will be, uh, that is what we will start after lunch because I see we need uh, uh, some lead time in, in that. Uh, also, Secretariat will be better equipped technically uh, that all of us will be able to exceed every piece of information. 
So, therefore, now we're looking at uh, 61 to uh, 70, going one by one, and seeing whether there are any particular issues with any of those 10 uh, uh, workshops. Uh, Mark, and then and then Virat. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, we're on uh, one to six. Um, I don't see in the comments any major deficiency. There are one or two general criticisms, but uh, overall the, sc the scoring was very high. And the, I would, I, I certainly do support this, um, with just the caveat that the geodiversity of uh, participation could be looked at with, reg with regard to Africa in particular. Uh, but looking at the page of comments, I, I, I think this is a good um, example of, of uh, a candidate for inclusion. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Virat. Mr. Chairman, I first have to support Fiona's comments completely, but I just wanted to say that um, I support this um, 126 for sure. Uh, this is at the heart of the discussion that we have even with regards to net neutrality, where there are comments on both sides, one which requires large-scale funding for building out digital infrastructure, and the other that requires uh, um, some sort of restrictions on what can be done with the networks. Um, and so this is really at the heart of that and should be should be discussed, uh, because these are the kind of balances that we need to achieve through these debates. Um, but just going forward, since we're at 60 to 70, could I submit that you, um, the, 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 the one um, stakeholder that is underrepresented is government and intergovernmental organizations. They're certainly underrepresented. So we should make a conscious effort to pull up proposals either submitted by them or the ones in which they are there in, in, in plenty. Apart from that, um, I think we should get uh, a clear idea now of what is it that we think is missing, because uh, then it's going to get very, very subjective. This, the, 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 what I should put on my email and the Nana put on her email, government and intergovernmental certainly is a big problem. Yeah. And, I, and I take your point, even though they are proportionately represented in the top 80, uh, slightly less than top 60, people will say only 10 proposals or whatever. So we need to sort of pick those. But apart from that, if there are any other objectives, then we should really establish those now. The second point I'd like to make is, would you rather want to go with the process saying 61 to 70, does anybody object to any of the seven, any of these proposals? And if yes, please put your hand up proposal and give us the comments that you have on either it's an improvement or that it should be re removed. That might be a faster process to say, can you tell us if you object to any of the next 10? Um, or we can go to, through one by one. But you know, I'm just trying to give an alternate process that can be slightly faster and help people focus on what they don't want. Otherwise, we'll be looking for sponsors in each case, and the fact that they made it in the top 70 should assume that there were sponsors and they were highly ranked. So thank you, German. You, you had a, your flag up. Yes, it was Germán um, Maldés from the non-resource organization. So we need to remember that there are uh, remote participants that is, wants to identify the speakers. Um, it, it was better related to the clarification you raised before, but um, I, I but also I wanted to mention that there is a lot of work behind these ratings, uh, and um, people has done has done his uh, homework. So um, if I maybe I was a bit confused, but uh, I, I put it uh, be received well the, the idea of having a champion of each proposal. I mean, I think the proposal is there because uh, there is some work behind uh, for many people, and this is there. So I think uh, the first consideration is, is, is it remains unless uh, there is uh, serious concerns. Uh, uh, and I like the idea also that to review uh, the proposals that you suggested, and I, I shared uh, without concerns of uh, looking for the right proportions uh, of, the, of the workshops and the and the proposals, uh, proposers of that. Uh. 
Well, that was thank you, Mr. Chairman. So thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, I just want to say that I think this can be very fast. What Farad just did by sponsoring that last proposal means that we're done, we can move forward. I think it's politically very difficult to ask people to put their flag up and say, I, will, I object to this one particular thing. We're then going to have a long discussion. And I think the worst part is that people are not necessarily comfortable saying, I have a problem with this, because then they'll be fingered as the person who killed somebody's proposal. Uh, that's not what's useful here. What's useful is to pick out, to make sure there's enough space here by not supporting a few of these 40 proposals so that we have places where we can move proposals with government, with new ideas, into the top 100. I mean, th the sponsors I think worked very well last time. We can move very quickly as long as there's somebody willing to say, I thought that's a good proposal. In some cases, no one will say that because they already got a proposal that they thought was better into the top 60. And so that, that, some of these are going to drop out because there isn't real support for it because it's not the best proposal on a topic. It might be the third best proposal on the topic, at which point we shouldn't even be considering it. But nobody's going to stand up and say, take it out. Susan? Susan? Hi. Um, when we're ready, I have a suggestion um, about a few workshops, which I think they focus on the same content, and all of them are 75 and above. So if we get to a point where we're discussing perhaps mergers and bringing these workshops together, I'm, I'm ready to do that, because I do have a concrete proposal. OK, thank you. We're not yet there, Bahir. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is Bad Asmut. Uh, just, uh, I, I mean, I've been listening to uh, comments uh, made by colleagues, and I'm also a little bit um, <coughs> uncomfortable with, with the fact that we're trying to identify workshops that made it to the top 100 and scored four and above. We're trying to identify them and, you know, take them out of the list. Uh, I think instead of doing that, let's try to identify workshops that could not make it to the top 100 and based on reasons that we've been discussing about stakeholder groups, themes, etc., identify them, see whether they are 10, 20, and if we have agreement that we need to get those 10 or 20 into the top 100, then we go to the top 100 and see from 80 to 100 which ones we can take out. So let's do it the other way around. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure that we're ready to, to do that now, and, and uh, since, since we had this conversation uh, about uh, how many we include automatically, and uh, it was, uh, uh, there was a proposal to change that, that uh, uh, ratio, uh, after conversation, general dis discussion, uh, I proposed to do a compromise and go with the sev 70 quasi-automatic and just to review whether out of those uh, uh, additional then there would be any uh, any comments, uh, whether shortening or, or uh, uh, some some other other things, and then after in the afternoon uh, we would start exactly with this uh, uh, what you are proposing here. We would start pulling pulling the list together of uh, uh, workshops which uh, would need to be included uh, not on uh, scoring, but uh, on. Uh, balancing uh, for balancing reasons, uh, for um, uh, uh, perception reasons, and so on. So I, I'm not sure that if we start it now, we're we're not ready yet. We need some time to refresh our memories uh, and to uh, each of the mag members to look through the list again and identify those. Uh, workshops that they would like to propose be included on this uh, uh, separate list. Marilyn, are you in agreement? My comment is going to be a specific proposal, but yes, I'm in agreement. So th thank you. The spe specific proposal for uh, one, one um, 
78. Um, it's a specific proposal for 146. It's the one right beyond, beyond it. So whenever you get to that. So thank you. Uh, 178. So proposal was to include and uh, uh, do it as a breakout group discussion, which would be a new innovative format. Remote participant. Subi, please go ahead. Subi, are you still there? Okay, let us move then. I, I assume that, that this is uh, a wish mark. Sorry, we, we're coming here on 178 now? Uh, yes, 178. 178. Um, I think, judging looking at the comments, um, or rather the absence of comments in the evaluations, uh, all the high scoring suggesting that this is retained as a valuable um, platform for uh, a 60 minute platform for the Safer Internet uh, Day campaign. So I, I detected we were all in consensus on this, the, the max scorers. Thank you. Just making sure that we are in con consensus on this. So we are in consensus. This is retained. Uh, next one, uh, 146. And can we p get it up on the screen, please? Marilyn? Thank you, Marilyn Kate speaking. Um, I understand this is an innovative idea, but um, I would like to propose that it um, that it be shortened. Um, I also will note that um, it's proposed as a panel, um, and I assume that's because the idea is that there has to be a good amount of information giving that is done uh, given the topic. Um, I do think it's an interesting item. I would not have made it um, as big a priority uh, as. Um, as others, and I think there are others below it that are actually a higher priority than this one. So if we keep it, and I am asking the question, I'd like to move it lower in the priority and shorten the amount of time. So thank you very much. There is a proposal. Any reactions? Uh, Mark? I'm oh, sorry, Avery first, Mark up. Avery, please. Thank you. Aubrey speaking. I, it's one, actually, I didn't get my sign up in time. It's one I wanted to speak out in favor of, of supporting. I think it is a new topic that is becoming an importance governance issue. And I think it will take that much time. And yes, they did do a panel. And I was one of those that wasn't in favor of panels. But they also did a very adequate paper to go along with it. So I would suggest uh, keeping it in. So thank you very much. I actually, yesterday I read the news that somebody was uh, hacked the flying uh, airplane. And, and uh, that may become increasingly an issue. Uh, Mark, then Dominique, uh, then Mark. Thanks. So I, I agree with um, Marion Kate that we shorten this. It's a, it's a very specific topic. Um, automated uh, vehicles within the IoT uh, environment, so include it, uh, but uh, shorten it. I did suggest potentially a merger with number eight. Uh, that's another option. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, can, can we see also number eight on the screen? And uh, in the meantime, Dominique? Thanks. I'm just trying to, okay. Yes. So this was going to be my point, actually, because the autonomous vehicles are, um, are part of the Internet of Things. And I believe, if I, if I can remember correctly from my response on, on the first, not on this, but on the, the one we're discussing, my concern with this was um, the lack of um, uh, private sector uh, uh, confirmed for this particular panel, because basically that's what's driving this. I know at the GSMA in particular, we're working on this quite a lot, so I was more interested in hoping to see more confirmed uh, private sector in addition to everything else there. But I'll support Mark and um, Marilyn in merging it with number eight. Thanks. Uh, okay, Michael. 
just want to strongly support inclusion of a merged proposal. Uh, eight and this proposal would fit together great, complement each other, fill in a lot of the gaps. Okay, uh, it seems that uh, uh, workshop or, or proposal number eight is scored uh, and is on is ranked 128. Okay, just for information. Uh, and that's primarily because it wasn't as diverse as it needed to be. Okay. Uh, Juan Alfonso. I want to ask my colleagues to please uh, bear, put yourself in context. This IGF is going to be in a developing country, also in a part of the developing country. It's not exactly the northeast, but it's also in, in a part that is not the most developed part of that country. And all these things is science fiction for developing countries. And <laughs> I really think that these are the places where we can move on some other. So <laughs> actually my proposal is to not consider this at all. I didn't vote for any of these things. Not because it's not going to happen, but uh, because we have to be in context. We, we, this is a year of sustainable development. Sust development post 2015 development agenda. We're talking of clean water. We're talking about access to education, you know, talking about Internet of Things, when we're discussing of all these things, you know, to have um, medication, to, to try to increase uh, life expectancy above 50 years. And um, please, uh, we, Thank you. we have point, to be in point, context. Point, and, uh, point and otherwise, uh, we're not going to have any free slots to move from the no, we will have. So maybe we can stop here points. and just take the first hundred and spend our time some issues. Point so I understand uh, that we, 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 need, we need to be attentive to uh, every, every proposal and uh, in, if in one part of the world it, it seemingly is not important in other parts of the world it is important and I wouldn't like to fly fly planes or, or be in the car which which may be hacked by somebody so uh, that that's that's very simple uh, uh, Michael just a quick response um, many of the Internet of Things applications are being rolled out first in developing countries a lot of cases the new infrastructure is being built with the Internet of Things built in and drugs is a great example putting sensors on prescription drugs so that the right non-counterfeit drugs get deployed in the third world is a great application of the Internet of Things. So thank you, uh, Cheryl. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I support the merger. Um, I think this topic is a key topic and will be a good proposal. Uh, thank you. Fiona, please. Um, yes, just to be brief, I'd like to um, support the comments made by Avery. Um, we did ab establish this higher threshold for people if they were going to do a panel to actually write a paper, and I'd like to respect that request we made of people. So for those that bother to take the time to write a paper, we shouldn't penalize them by changing the format they've proposed. Um, I'd also like to point out this is actually from the Intergovernmental Organization Stakeholder Group, which people keep saying is underrepresented. So I think you should take a, that into account when you're considering the leading things or merging things as well. So thank you. Um, I take that uh, we are in agreement of uh, retaining it and uh, uh, suggesting that uh, uh, proponents of 146 uh, could consider merging with, with 8, uh, or at least uh, putting uh, their, their team in the context a uh, broader context of uh, safety, security of on Internet of Things. Marilyn. I'm going to make, uh, Marilyn Kate, I'm going to make one final uh, effort at this. Uh, I think these two should be urged to merge, and I think that um, uh, I support, um, I support Juan's um, comment about we really need to uh, look at the workshops and also urge these folks to make their, um, 
session relevant to how IoT in this particular application area also relates to the needs of the developing countries. And I think with that, the two could merge. They could be given 60 minutes. They could be left at 90 minutes as merged if they uh, also reflect the relevance for uh, developing countries so that it's uh, more easily understood. Thanks. So thank you very much. This then is also uh, our decision. Jack, you are in agreement, right? Yeah, but I'm not so pushing for a merge. I think merges are quite difficult things, and maybe even though the topic seems similar, it might not be coming from the same approach. And I want to support this also because of the lineup of speakers. There's a lot of um, government speakers, and there's also speakers from um, developing countries, actually, that they've identified, for example, Learn Asia. So I think it, and, and also to say that even though IoT seems to be science fiction, it is something that is being tested out in often in developing contexts where there isn't such regulation or concerns about rights. So I think it is quite a, uh, an important topic to also like um, bear into, you know, to bear in mind. But I do support the, the proposal of, um, of recommending um, to think about this from the perspective of safety, privacy and, r and risks as well. So thank you very much. So retained. Uh, uh, Ruth, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to a few to be not uh, confusing things, I'm putting on my NL IGF hat at this moment and not the, the, the UN hat. Uh, there's a proposal called 180, uh, sorry, 48, which is basically looking at this topic from an even larger, more abstract level. Because what we're talking about here is the change that we are making from, from one society to another. We're moving into a digital age, and one of the factors of that is automated cars. The other one is healthcare that is going to change, etc., etc., etc. In Proposal 48, we try to tackle all of that from very different sort of uh, angles. So if we're talking about mergers, then I think that perhaps it's possible to look at it from a more abstract level and look at, okay, are these sort of topics coming into the same sort of, the same sort of topic that we're discussing, changing our society, which is going on at this moment. So my suggestion would be, could we look at it from, from just a little bit more abstract point of view and see what sort of topics have been brought in, proposals have been brought in, and if they try to merge it from, from that angle, because then it will be much more valuable than that just look at what does it mean for cars. So that's a, a suggestion. So thank, thank you very much, uh, though we, we agreed not, not to promote uh, uh, workshops where we may have some vested interest and putting your NL hat so you, <laughs> you, you did it. But, but okay, thank you. It is, it's understood and then and, and, and taken. Uh, so let us move to the next one. Uh, 253, empowering the next billion by improving accessibility. Currently uh, scored uh, 66. Any comments? Michael? I thought Fiona supported that earlier, and I would support it as well. Thank you. Any other comments? Specifics? Marilyn? Yes, thank you, Chair. I have a, a specific comment. I, I'd just like to ask them to have a little more clarity on how they're going to handle the, uh, I support including it, but a little more clarity on how the expert uh, presentations, this then says open interactive discussion with all participants. Uh, I don't know if that means a town hall or it means a, um, uh, some that they're going to use some other uh, well-defined approach to make sure that it is uh, actually um, an interactive discussion. So I'd just like to uh, forward that question, but I do support including Uh, whom you address your question? Uh, I think it would just be a mag comment to, uh, to from the secretariat to the organizers whenever they're told what their status is. Thank you very much for this proposal. Uh, Mark? Thanks, yes. Um, it's a very strong proposal, support it. Um, 
I just noted uh, absence of uh, African participation. Uh, a number of us uh, identified merger opportunities, but I see there's no consensus on how to merge it when the, num the uh, suggested uh, opportunities for merging are all different for all of us. So that suggests that we, we keep it as a standalone <laughs> proposal. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much. I, I see that uh, there is a general consensus. Juan and Falso. Yes, uh, number 55 is similar. Internet governance for the next billion. And the proposals are from South America and, mm -hmm. and some other places. Maybe we could uh, try to merge. Uh, have we already lost interest in merging to try to include more people into the program? Because I think this is an opportunity if, if we have a, a similar, that even the name is similar, Internet Governance for the Next Billion, uh, why don't we try to, to merge and bring more people in the program? And uh, there's some other in, in billions around there that we could uh, try to merge. Is that, that not what we're supposed to do? Otherwise, uh, I, I really, well, I don't know. So thank you, uh, Hassan. Thank you, Chair. Well, I, I can see that it is organized by the Dynamic Coalition for Disability and Access. So maybe they have already an opportunity within the Dynamic Coalition. So my suggestion is to shorten it or to merge it. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Michael and Aubrey afterwards. I would go along with shortening it to 60 minutes. I don't think it would make sense to merge it with another session on Internet governance for the next billion because this is really focused on accessibility and is a, a well-focused uh, proposal, which I think would be lost if we tried to merge it. So thank, thank you, uh, Avri. Thank you, Avri speaking. I generally don't, don't accept uh, the, the, the advantage of merging. I don't suggest merging this one. I think something we need to put on our notes for, for the future is that we give people a chance to merge before we do the grading. But I think enforcing merges has shown itself to be something that does not work. Thank, thank you. Uh, Cheryl? Thank you. I would not support mer uh, merging this particular one. I do support including it on its own. I think it's a really key topic. Um, I offer a suggestion since it seems that there are still a lot of outstanding questions regarding merging. And um, taking Alvi's point, we can't go backward. But maybe what we can do is possibly over part of the lunch break, a group can get together and try to work out how exactly we will go about putting these mergers together, or at least approaching these groups and encouraging them to possibly merge, if that's what the, what the MAG uh, final consensus is. Thanks. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, sorry to come back in again. Um, I, I, as I said before, I think it really does deserve a standalone treatment because it's, as, as Mike Nelson uh, mentioned, it's referring particularly to empowering people with disabilities. And I, I think that could be put into the title to help people understand what this this uh, session is going to be about. Uh, it's just um, I, I noted on on quite a few proposals that titling was pretty poor in actually conveying to participants exactly what this valuable workshop is going to be about, and they will miss potential participation as a result. So it's a point to, uh, to pay attention to, I think, the titling. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, German. Thank you. Hello, uh, Valdez and all. Um, I'd like to uh, fully support how we mentioned so that uh, some action should be taken in the future for um, um, the merging of uh, proposals. I can see 
five proposals that, in, that uh, talks about uh, next billion just in the title, just five. And uh, I agree that uh, working in the immersion in the, in the practical way, it, it doesn't work very well. So some action should be taken before the grading regarding the, the immersion. And so I would like to add to that uh, other comments. Thank you. So thank you very much. Sin, uh, excuse me, uh, Zendong, I didn't see your, your uh, flag up, please. I, I saw that there is a uh, uh, full proposal uh, to discuss about the next billing. So number 55, number uh, 266, number 139, and number 253. And, and for the number uh, 266 and the two, uh, 253 is to dis discuss how to improve the access. And I, I, I suggest maybe can, we can mark that. And I think that there is a little bit difference for number 55. It, I, I saw the proposal is a little different from other three ones. Uh, so thank you. Um, uh, remote participant and then Hanan Holzer. Can you go ahead, please? Ginger, you have the floor. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I've been speaking to myself. I'm hoping you can still hear me now. Um, I would like to support trying to work a little better with the titles so that we can identify them, and particularly because uh, this says it's the next billion, but it is, as mentioned before, specifically um, for disability, it's an important topic that we need to include. I do support including it because it does uh, offer a different facet of disability and inclusion. I'm wondering, though, if we can um, make available to, after, the, after we select all the workshops, we know which ones have been selected, but somehow make the information very available to, to people with a more proper title and so that they can easily find workshops they might offer their resources and their speakers and their input to so there can be self-mergers or self-inclusion of ideas from the, the non-approved workshops into the ones that are going on to use them as a as a additional force to improve the ones that were accepted and then to make a note for next time if there's a way to identify more clearly from titles so that people can offer to work together. Thank you. So thank, thank you very much, uh, Juan and Alfonso. Yes, I want to thank my colleagues for pointing me out because I made a mistake uh, in my table. Uh, this should be on the accessibility and not on the, the next billion. But I, I still think that we can do some merger here because I identified at least six other workshop proposals relating with blind dis dis disability and accessibility. Number, if you want to take note, please, are number 32, 39, 90, 253, 256, and 259. And I believe that maybe that is not an exhaustive list. I m might have missed something. So uh, in my ranking, this is the third topic in terms of uh, popularity from the workshops proposal. As I said before, I think I sent an email uh, last month about this. The, the topic that has more workshop proposals is child and youth issues that have more than 15 workshop proposals. The second comes women and gender. And gender but it, it has nearly 10. And then is this uh, blind disability and accessibility. I think uh, that in, in trying to be inclusive with all those that has proposed uh, workshops in this topic, we should strive to see, uh, reach them if they want to uh, merge their, 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 their activities. In that case, if it's a merger, I will uh, suggest to keep the whole time 
propose because it's an important topic and because of the, the, the proposals, uh, it's not because of our criteria, it's because of the number of workshops that are proposed, it, what it, it is so important, this accessibility part. Thank you. So thank you very much. It seems to me that uh, we, can, we can agree of retention this and suggest uh, the uh, workshop proponents uh, to consider um, uh, fine-tuning of the title and considering pos possible uh, merger or at least invitation of uh, uh, proponents of other, other uh, workshops on similar topic to, to join them. If that, if that would be something we could agree, uh, then we could proceed to the next one, uh, 167. Any comments? 167. Unlocking Internet Economy Through Copyright Reform. Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. I do support uh, inclus including this, but I take note that actually I don't think I see the um, participation from all points of view. Uh, this seems to me to be um, focusing on um, uh, participation from uh, primarily from developing countries, which is a really important thing to do, but I am uh, wondering if there uh, it could be strengthened by also adding in uh, perhaps the more traditional uh, developed country um, perspective to, um, to this workshop. Okay, thank you very much. Any other comments? Uh, Virat? It's an interesting uh, proposal which talks about copyright reforms and it's from the civil society and it is also a debate. So I think it should be pre preserved. There are several reasons to be preserved. And I think I agree with uh, Madeline if they want to include or can be recommended to include some new voices. Um, but I think the, uh, this House believes kind of uh, discussion. Uh, debates are only um, uh, at top 60, only, only um, 2%. So I think it will be a good thing to keep this format since we have fought so much to improve formats. So thank you very much. Uh, Susan? Yes, um, I would also um, support preserving the proposal as is. Um, I also note that I think it's pretty exciting that um, they've brought in the South African Screen Federation um, and working with um, the kind of the, the rights holders um, from the developing countries. Oftentimes we don't um, hear much from them. Um, so I think I think it would be great to preserve it as is. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn? This is one of the ones, Lynn Sainamor, um, that I actually wondered if this was um, positioning itself as a debate, but it was more as a panel. It also references there had been a detailed analysis um, paper done, but the paper wasn't included. So if, um, if it does go forward, then I would suggest that we ensure that the paper is, in fact, included and circulated. So thank you for this proposal. Uh, Avery? Yeah, I just wanted to point out that this one did include WIPO and government, so it wasn't a civil society only or a southern only. It really did have a much wider perspective. I agree, it called itself a debate, so I think, you know, we should encourage them to remember that they're setting up a debate. Mark? Thanks, yes, uh, I, I agree entirely, and uh, it would be useful to have that paper, um, but it, it's a model of aiming for uh, balanced and geodiverse geo um, participation, so full score on that. So thank you. We then can retain it and, and ask uh, proponents to submit paper as they have promised. Uh, let us move then to the next one, uh, 123. Uh, indicators to promote evidence-based uh, evidence based policy making. Panel. Uh, Juan Alfonso. There are several workshops in the topic of indicators and measurements. 
And it's an important and interesting topic because it serves uh, the basis for objective policy making uh, that it's benefit all stakeholders. So I, I suggest to uh, not only retain this, but to see if some other workshops proposals could be merged in order to have a more comprehensive coverage of this subject of indicators and measuring of information society. And this is a thing that is not only only covered by governments and intergovernmental organizations, like, you know, this is initiative of ITU, the World Bank, UNESCO, and some other in the measuring information society uh, grand collaboration, but also civil society and some other organizations also have indicators and uh, are using this for policy evaluation and, and development. So I think it's an important uh, topic, but I suggest in, in for inclusion, to try to include maybe those workshops that are be beyond the 100 list to, to include it with this. I, I, I reiterate that, that my, my feeling is to try to include as much uh, workshop proposals in, into existing one, and this one is uh, important. So thank you very much, Avery. It's not on this topic, uh, Anki. I support this uh, workshop proposal and also I think this is one proposal where uh, we will have an opportunity to encourage more participation from government stakeholders, which is a focus of our discussion in previous uh, workshop uh, sessions also, which we've discussed. And therefore, it is not only relevant, but it also gives an opportunity to involve more government stakeholders in this discussion. So thank you very much, Virat. I support the proposal. It's got some really good speakers, some very experienced ones. Has uh, the government of Egypt sort of you know has a has a really good sort of feel to it. And I think, in, especially in the developing countries, we get a lot of um, policies that are not always evidence. substantiated by evidence. So this would be a good discussion. I'm not sure 90 minutes is enough. If I was them, I'd seek a little more, but I think we should certainly uh, let this go. Thank you. So you, you suggest that this is emotional, emotionally driven yes. policy making. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Uh, remote participant. Uh, Tuella indicated uh, her uh, support uh, uh, for this uh, workshop proposal number 123. Um, because her uh, internet connection is uh, bad, so she cannot use audio. And uh, we have uh, uh, Subi also waiting, so... Okay, so Subi, please, uh, you have the floor. Um, no, Subi, we cannot hear you. But she said in chat that she, she supports the proposal. Thank you, Subi. With, with Subi's uh, support the proposal, we can then put it in the list. And uh, uh, also indicate uh, to pro uh, proponents that they may uh, wish to see of enlarging and inviting uh, sim similar workshop uh, proponents uh, uh, which proposals may not enter in, in the uh, on the list uh, to join uh, the effort. Let us move to the next one, 187, promoting local actions to secure internet rights. 187, any comments? Still two more to go for this session. One hundred eighty seven, Mark. Thanks. I, I rated this highly because of its um local community emphasis. I think it's valuable for the IGF to have this kind of reach out into into uh, local community um, challenges, thinking, and so on. So uh, 
I, I would argue for uh, this being uh, retained. Thanks. So thank you very much. Any further comments? Uh, Virat? I support Mark's comments and I support the proposal. Leah? Also support Mark's comments in retaining this proposal. Aida. Please. Also in support of this project because it's one of the rares that really brings the local aspect of it. So may I take that this is our wish to support it and include it and move to the next uh, 114. Implementing core principles in the digital age. Marilyn. Thank you, Chair. I spent quite a bit of time looking at this, and um, uh, there's a number of workshops that focus on principles. Um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to uh, say I think um, it's a topic that we need in the um, IGF overall, um, but I'd like to see the topic examined for possible merger with some others that um, uh, may be further down and otherwise might not um, might not be included. I will just say, you know, this seems to be um, um, uh, also it's proposed by uh, by two governments. I think it could have legitimately uh, been presented as an open forum as well. Um, and I just want to take note of that. Uh, so I'd like to ask that they consider uh, whether they're open to um, including other groups that are uh, interested in the same issue, or if this is, in fact, um, really just focused on the two governments' uh, joint initiatives, in which case I would say um, reduce it to 60 minutes and retain it. So thank you very much, Virat. So um, Ambassador Benito cannot support this, but I'm going to support this. <laughs> Um, I think it's a. I think it's a really good proposal. I just before we, uh, if I could get a, do we have a count on the number of open forums requests that we got? Do we have that? I'm sorry, I'm, I don't have it handy. If the secretary could support with that, because if that if that number is full, then we must retain it as is. Do we have that? Uh, we have twenty. Open. 20, for 20 open forums, which are factored in already. In yeah, in, in but the list. then there's. Sorry, can you speak on the mic? Uh, we have 20 open forums which were uh, factored in, and then they are um, at the bottom there, if you see on the screen, if, it's, if you can zoom in. I think there's eight, which um, we, or seven, which the secretary um, think don't qualify with the definition of an open forum that we posted. Mm. Uh, uh, thank you, Leah. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I don't want to, I can't really support or, uh, uh, this proposal as I've been noted as one of the speakers and I haven't graded it for that reason, but I can say that uh, I've been approached by the, the German uh, uh, proposals who have, who have put this uh, proposal together. Um, and perhaps to answer uh, Marilyn's question about the, the scope of, uh, of whether it's just to do with these two governments uh, perspective on the issue, my sense was that it was um, to do with much broader, uh, much broader, um, dealing with a much broader issue that had to do with bringing a principled approach to a number of decision making bodies that have to do with internet governance, uh, including spaces such as the IETF and the ITU. Um, so if, if that uh, helps clarify the matter, I just wanted to offer that. Thank, um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I see uh, a remote participant, and then Efren. Uh, Tuella suggested that uh, she's supporting uh, number uh, 114, and uh, she's particularly noting that it's uh, coming from a government stakeholder, and it has diversity in speakers. Thank you, Efrem. Actually, Tuella just said what I wanted to say that uh, I support it, and uh, if you look at the 
um, speakers and the participants who have been invited. Uh, it's, it's diverse and uh, we should support it uh, with this recommendation that they should uh, make it more, more uh, diverse by including the Global South, more speakers from the Global South. Thank you. So thank you. Can I take that we are uh, able to support it? Lynn, you're in agreement, right? I am in agreement, but I also wanted to suggest if it was possible to look at merging or inviting um, 55 in as well. 55 was ranked 92, but it would be quite interesting to look at the questions that they actually pose in their abstract and to see how these set of studies actually support that. But I support the proposal even as it stands alone. Okay, thank you. Marilyn, you have a last, last word I just have say. one final comment to make. Um, so I would just uh, invite the organizers, and I uh, realize that um, our host is here, uh, that there are a number of uh, proposed speakers that are not confirmed. Yeah, the confirmation usually is a bit tricky thing at, at early stages. But uh, uh, so I, my sense is that we retain this proposal. Uh, Michael. I would also suggest that we merge it with 55. Several people mentioned the need to broaden. I mean, it's a lot of people on there, but many of them are already committed to other panels. I noted that uh, Mr. K is, is on 11 proposals, including this one. Um, so I, I think that putting this one with 55 would justify a full 90-minute session. Yeah, you took uh, words out of my mouth, Michael. I was uh, about to say that uh, we and encourage the uh, organizers or proponents of the proposal to uh, approach uh, organizers of 55 and to see if uh, cooperation is uh, feasible. So with, with that, we have uh, reached uh, agreed uh, level of seven, 70 uh, proposals which are uh, provisionally on our agreed list. And in the afternoon, we will start compiling a list of uh, proposals uh, in order to seek uh, right balance uh, in the overall uh, workshop proposal list. So how we will be doing this? We uh, maybe can spend now uh, another uh, five minutes to uh, remind ourselves what were these uh, missing balances. Uh, I take that one of them is uh, governmental, or lack of rather, government of governmental uh, participation, that we should uh, see uh, whether there are any ways to improve it. There might be, but there may not be. For instance, we cannot uh, 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 seek uh, more government proposals than governments have actually proposed themselves. So that would be one limitation and that would be a natural limitation. So that, that's, that's one element. Another element we, we would uh, seek uh, also um, other stakeholder groups if they feel they're not uh, represented. And I heard technical community and I want to hear whether that is confirmed or not. Then on themes. Uh, the reason why we choose sub-themes uh, of the main theme is to kind of help us structure uh, the, 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 uh, the whole event. And therefore, whether we like it or not, we uh, most probably need to stick to sub-themes that we have identified ourselves and to see uh, whether uh, the proper balance is found also on sub-theme level. Uh, what we have identified, and we have identified eight of them. Uh, statistically, as, as we see, uh, there is a certain disbalance on sub-themes, uh, sub-theme level as well. And uh, uh, it would be uh, interesting to hear uh, which in the view of uh, members uh, are uh, not sufficiently represented. So please, I will ask uh, uh, Sita to uh, launch this discussion. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Sita from uh, HIVOS. I would like to propose uh, including uh, Southeast Asia as well in our criteria to make more geographic balance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Virat. Um, clearly, government and, and uh, intergovernmental. So during lunch, we'll try and get a list of proposals beyond 100 uh, which had government and intergovernmental and sort of put them up there and see which of those can be pulled in in case we are able to create any space. So that's a list of about uh, 18 odd, uh, I'm just doing the rough numbers right now. So that would be one to sort of just have in front of us. Um, the second, I, I know it keeps coming back, but the technical community is actually quite well represented. Uh, I just want to be again, clear again. Of the total proposals submitted, only 12% came from the technical community. In the top 60, they already have 15% share, which is higher than the proportion. And if you went to top 80, they are at 12%. So I don't think we should worry about technical communities. They are well represented. Government and intergovernmental are rather short. Um, private sector is a little bit short, but I think they can take care of themselves. Um, I would just sort of keep it at that. Thanks. So thank you. Marilyn? Thank you, Chair. I'm uh, Marilyn Kate speaking. I'd like to um, clarify, and I will do this over lunchtime. I, I think saying that governments and intergovernmental organizations are not represented um, does not recognize that, in fact, they may be well represented as speakers, but they may not have chosen to submit uh, workshops where they are shown as the organizer. In the past, um, in past IGFs, in many cases, uh, IGOs chose to use open forums because they, uh, the criteria is quite different. It does not require uh, balance. It allows them to um, provide information about their initiatives and activities. So, I think over the over the um, lunch hour, I, I would. I want to look at this and ask others to, to look at whether the participation is limited uh, uh, on governments and in a governmental organizations, or whether it is that they are not showing up as organizers. The second thing I just want to mention is I, I, it's my view that the internet economy is not um, yet um, as a, as a sub-theme uh, well represented and I, I will take a look at that and then I will just after the lunch hour I have some um, comments about possible mergers among some of the workshops that focus on um, women uh, to see if there would also be a way to advance more participation on that uh, from those workshops. So thank you very much Fiona. Yes, um, thank you, Janice. Just to respond to Marilyn's point, uh, at least my observation was that it wasn't governments as proposers of workshops. Governments weren't well represented as participants on the workshops, and I think that can be fixed after the fact. I don't think it necessarily needs to be part of this. But I do have um, a question for clarification, Janice, about the next steps. So is the expectation that we're going to come back after lunch and the people are going to propose from the floor workshops to be considered, or is are we going to actually ask uh, MAG members to provide those numbers of workshops to the Secretariat during the lunch break so that we can come back and start with a list on the screen. I would uh, propose this the latter so we can a little bit be more focused as opposed to just general conversations again. Thank you. Uh, the, the, uh, th thank you actually for this proposal. I think it's a very, very good one. Um, uh, may maybe we, s we still also need to think about uh, right to food of Secretariat and uh, let, let them one hour loose from one to two uh, and then ask somebody to be uh, in the room at starting from two uh, that could take those uh, proposals and uh, cluster them in one sort of uh, file that we can quickly uh, put them on the screens. Thank you for this proposal. Um, Michael? Uh, I, too, am very concerned about the government panelists that aren't there, and I know why, having been a government of, uh, official, you don't know that you can go to these meetings often until two months, maybe one month before. Um, it would be very helpful if there was a way to 
find out early which government officials are coming so that there was a pool of people that might be tapped by those panelists who are trying to round out their panels. Um, I don't know what privacy implications there are there or whatever, but if there is a way to identify those government speakers who might be available, because that, that, that's what it comes down to. You might identify the best person and then find out they aren't available, and then find out there was an even better person who was already there. So thank, thank you, uh, Eka. Makan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Makan Faye, ECA. Uh, I suggest that we also try to bring more intergovernmental organizations because uh, not only they represent uh, government, but also they have in their uh, stakeholder groups, civil society, private sector, and technical community. And uh, I don't think they are well represented in this uh, uh, round. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, Lynn? Lynn Sainamore. Um, just a quick comment. A number of people have, have said that they have some concrete suggestions with respect to um, proposals to be merged, and I know that there were a lot of comments merging them. I don't know if the Secretary has or if they could actually pull together a subsection of the remaining proposals to say these are some of the clumps, if you will, of proposals that have been suggested for merger and see if we can deal with them around a, th a fit for theme. Are they actually filling some of our other gaps and then in that way actually address a lot of the perhaps lesser valued uh, proposals. So thank you very much. Uh, Mark, you're the last one. Yeah, thank you. Um, just uh, I'm with the UK government, as, as most of you will know, on this issue and challenge of uh, governmental participation. It's uh, Mike has um, hit on one uh, aspect. Uh, officials have wide dossiers. Uh, on usually on in the ICT area and they have other con conflicts and so on so it's difficult for them to commit uh, and also at a time when uh, many governments are hit by ever tightening travel budgets and uh, austerity uh, deficit addressing pressures that's the case in the UK it's it's a challenging time um, I, I, I would recommend proposers reaching out to governments at an early stage and really getting a particular government expert to engage actively and then you're more likely to secure that person's presence at, at the event itself. There is the remote participation opportunity and that should be uh, uh, presented to, uh, to targeted government experts. Um, so that, that you know, there are a number of factors and ways to address it. Um, I, I do note that the, the level of participation in terms of attendance at the IGF from governments has improved in recent years. Uh, the number of governments who have somebody uh, representing them in some way actually at the IGF has has remained quite high, about 90 governments, I think, in Istanbul, if, that, if, if I remember correctly. So that's a positive indicator, at least. 145. Oh, right. Oh, well, I'm, I stand to be corrected. It was much higher. So thank you. So thank you very much. I, th I think we now have more or less good uh, idea what, what we should look at uh, talking about uh, positive discrimination and bringing uh, workshop proposals which are not, uh, which did not receive higher scores uh, uh, higher, and uh, so I, I expect that uh, we will start next uh, session with um, uh, smoothly with those with those proposals. Of course, we also need to uh, keep in mind that emerging issues uh, uh, that has never been discussed in, in IGF also might might fall in the same category. Emerging issues uh, uh, to to look at. So that said, uh, Council of Europe, I think we, we need to, to break. If that is something essential, please, very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just very quickly to respond to Mark Carvel and the, the question about governmental representation and the IGOs. Um, uh, to be more efficient, I think from my perspective, uh, from the Council of Europe perspective, human rights, rule of law, democracy issues, there are many workshops there. I wonder whether I can serve as a sort of a resource person or as a sort of a gateway for access to possible governmental speakers and IGO speakers because I've been around for such a long time. Uh, I know many experts. It, it might help the process. It might help you in, in identifying quickly who could be useful. Thank you.
So thank you. We certainly will, will uh, re remember your, your offer and will uh, call on you uh, on this particular question. So thank you very much. We're now uh, breaking for lunch and we're reconvening at 3 o'clock sharp uh, to continue our conversation. Secretariat will be available in this room at uh, uh, 2.10. Uh, for all those who want to uh, give preliminary uh, information to Secretariat. So thank you very much. Bon appétit.